Hey, welcome Whoa. to Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Renard. Hey! This feels like oddly muffled, right? Like yeah. Like, Got to get it right up there, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that sounds, now we could hear it in the room. We're wearing our masks. We're wearing our gloves. It's a Friday night at the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Look at all these people. It's packed. It's crazy. With uh, ghosts, with invisible men. Uh, we're, uh, we're practicing our distancing. We're being as safe as we can, ladies and gentlemen. Put this away for later. Uh, we're here to chit-chat on a Friday night. Just got paid. Yeah. Oh, my God. Getting John Kemp. Um, it is so time to talk about comic books and the world of comic books on this show. We tend to talk about a lot of things uh, comic book related, but very rarely do we talk about comic books. My good friend Mark Bernardin was like, we should talk about uh, how the retailers are doing in all this. And I was like, retailers? I was like, wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, I, I know something about that. Uh, so that's what we're going to do up top. Uh, we're going to shift the order. We're going to do our news later on and stuff uh, because we got to get our special guests up and running so they can go out uh, on with their night and stuff like that. So here we are at the Scum and Nymph Villainy Cantina on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Last week, me and Mark did uh, uh, this show as a benefit for the cantina. This week, Mark, tell them what it's a benefit for. Uh, it's a benefit for... Uh, give the man a fucking close-up, would you? Give the man a close-up. Yeah. There it is. It's over there. Yeah, hey. give it to him, Smokey. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a, a DM on the Twitters from a, from a comic book writer named Donnie Cates. Okay. Who was like, dude, I'm a really big fan of the show. Um, I love it, but I think that, that right now we could all do a little bit to help raise awareness for the plight of the comic book retailer. Okay. Because they are being hit as hard, if not harder, than most um, small businesses simply because they were already a little bit on the, you know, on the, on the comic teetering book, edge. Comic book uh, community, uh, the comic book retail community, yes, has been uh, not the healthiest uh, retail community, but holding in there and stuff. And when you uh, tend to do it, a lot of stores do it more for the love mm -hmm. than the like, I'm swimming in money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's a, a passion like right. project. You know, and so because people can't go into the stores anymore, they're being forced to find different ways to get comic books to their customers. And then Diamond shut down for a couple of months, and so there wasn't even any new merchandise for them to sell. Right. And so, you know, the idea of doing a sort of fundraiser for the comic book retailer community felt really good to both of us. And so, you know, the tip jar is open and the proceeds from the tip jar are gonna go to the Bink Foundation, uh, B-I-N-C foundation.org. Right. And they are the sort of, um, this, this community, this, this uh, initiative that's helping to raise money for independent booksellers of which comic book retailers are a big part of. Um, and there are other charities, other people are doing the comic book creators for yeah, the yeah, retailers creators or for something. comics but is, uh tonight it's bink it's bink and i think baked. all of them are fun like the, the creators for comics all those auctions you've seen on twitter the last couple of days are all funneling that money right to bink which is helping to get that money to retailers who need it back to those retailers and just so nobody out there is just like why are we fucking giving money he's gonna give it to his comic book store i am not giving any of this money <laughs> we're, we're giving it all to bink and i don't think in our world we're reaching out to Bink or anything like that. I spoke to Michael Zapsick the other mm -hmm. day, uh, of course, one of the comic book men from AMC's Comic Book Men, Seven Seasons. Let's pour one out. Um, and, a movie? and a movie? Seven Seasons in a movie? If only. Um, well, they wound up in Jane Silent Bob Reboot. <laughs> a little like. scene in a movie. So I, I talked to Zapsick. I said, hey, man, like, uh, what was his name? Uh, Danny Cates? Donny Cates. Donny yeah. Cates. He's a Marvel writer, right? Yeah. So I saw a story where he was in at his comic book store in Austin. Mm -hmm. He like bought everybody's reserve books. Yeah, they're pull boxes. He they're pull boxes. I said, that's fucking sweet, man. I said, I'm going to do a Donny Cates. So I told Mike, I said, empty the pull box, send everything to every reservist, man. Like just in this time, like enjoy your books and shit mm -hmm. like that. So 
I pulled from that cat. Yeah. No, I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to do it too. It's a really generous um, move. And, and a, a move. lot of the creators, I mean, I think the way it's working is people are just like, hey, do you want to have a half an hour conversation with Tom King about Batman or whatever and have him read a script? Sure. Mm. Bid for it. And all that money, all the proceeds of that money. And that's happening soup to nuts across the board. Everybody's digging stuff out of their closets, like one of a kind things, things nobody's ever seen before, signed, original art. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk to, to Jim about it because Jim Lee has been doing this uh, 60 days, 60 sketches challenge where like every day he's drawing a, a cover, a sketch cover, and people bid on it online, and the person who bids the highest gets to pick the next cover. And Get Jim on the line. <laughs> Jim, where are you, Jim? Holy crap. I mean, this is, that's, I've watched him. When he came to my house and did Fat Man on Batman back in the day, he sat there drawing the whole time, mm. and he drew up this beautiful Harley piece that hangs in my house in the hallway and stuff. So, I, you know, I, I, in terms of 60 in 60 days, he's up to the challenge. I've, I've seen him draw. He's fast. He's up man. to the challenge. And, like, and that beautiful. dude sketches, like, the bids for them, you know, because he, he very generously, he texted me and a group of friends. He was like, hey, I'm doing this dead man comic. Uh, send me a picture of you lit like this, and I'll put you on the cover. And I was like, oh, that's fucking dope. And so I did the picture as he asked, and lo and behold, a couple hours later, he puts the sketch up online, and it's there's my face, like in the lower right hand corner. Oh shit! And uh, and I was like, you know, fuck it, I'm I'm I got a decent job, and I'm luckily still getting paid. Like maybe I'll bid on this, and maybe I'll maybe I'll buy my own sketch cover. And then like an hour into the into the eBay auction, it was like nine thousand dollars. <laughs> no, I won't. You're like it's just a fucking sketch. I, I know what I look like. <laughs> I got um, the picture. I saved it off of Instagram. How beautiful to be able to draw money for people. Yeah. At a time when they really need it. And also, this isn't just like, you know, one of the world's greatest artists and, and a comic book legend and shit. This is a guy that runs a company. Like, yeah. most of those cats are not boots on the ground looking out for the retailer. So, this is an incredibly sweet thing, yeah. man. And then Do we managed. have him? Oh, my yeah. God. Runs Ladies. Like, yeah. Cats. <laughs> On the ground looking out for oh. the retailer. So, this is an incredibly sweet thing. Yeah. And then we have him. Oh my yeah. God. Let's, yeah, let's kill the All right. speakers in the place, not yeah. Jim. Yeah. Uh, Jim, give to. us one second. We were just hearing our, our damn selves and stuff. I don't have the volume. Uh, can volume. you not hear us? I can hear you now, I think. How are you, man? We'll get up in the mics I'm doing a little good. bit more. Hey. Doing good. How, how am I coming in? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the legend Jim Lee. Give it up for Jim Lee, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for being here, sir. Uh, you're an old fat man uh, on Batman veteran, so to speak. Let me ask you this. Uh, it's a Friday night. What are you drawing right now? Because you got to do apparently a drawing a day. Tell us about the 60 and 60 challenge. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I set myself up for this. Uh, I don't think I've ever drawn stuff for 60 days in a row. I, I didn't realize this until, like, day 15, you know. Uh, but I'm, I'm working on uh, this half of this other sketch. I, I did this last night, or today. It's the Huntress from, like, Batman Hush. I don't know if you can see it. It's oh, kind of, awesome. uh, the lighting is not ideal here. <laughs> gorgeous. Uh, but it's Absolutely the Huntress as gorgeous. I kind of uh, drew her in that Batman series. And then it's a diptych, right? It's a fancy art term for uh, another piece that kind of ties into it. So there's this Batman head that's in the background here in the city, and it's going to be Deathstroke uh, on the left side there. So, um, yeah, the way it's set up is the high bidders on each sketch get to pick the next one in the queue that I draw. And uh, so I, I got the I, so I, I got both of these kind of around at the same time within hours of each other. And I said, what can I do to do something different? I've, I've done 15 of these already. I got to keep challenging myself in some way because um, you start running out of energy. And I, I kind of boxed myself into this one. I did this one of Sandman and the Endless. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I just put countless hours into it. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, like, this, was not, this was not the original plan. The original plan was just to do like quick little headshots. It would take like 30 minutes and I crank out one a day, kind of like while I'm on the phone or, you know, uh, eating uh, Pop-Tarts over, over breakfast. And, and I just got into the whole spirit of like, what? Yeah, let's raise as much money as we can. And, uh, and you know, you, you guys know, I mean, comics mean everything to me and the retailers and, and keeping that, uh, these stores, you know, up and running. And so uh, I just got inspired, I think, by also the reaction of the people and, and you know, online. They're going like, this is the best one yet. So every time you see that, it just wants you to like, it makes you want to. 
do a better one the next time and then a better one the next time. And so it was, uh, yeah, it's become a big thing now. So I got to figure out ways to keep my creativity, uh, creativity flowing and, you know, inspiration going. And, uh, it's been, uh, an interesting journey, only 25% of the way through. So I got a lot more ahead of me. Are you icing your hand? Are you like, uh, how are you taking care of the instrument? Cause that's a lot of work. For a guy who Do you have a corner detail. man where you're like, cut me, <laughs> I Mick? I can't hear Mark. Uh, hold on a second. Jim, do you? I'm going to go to the YouTube. Check, check. No, I might be delayed there. Yeah. yeah, it'll be delayed. Sorry, yeah. guys. It'll be here, Mark. Uh, hold on a second. Can you hear me? Check, right. check, There'll be a little bit of a Jim, delay. I'm going to go to the YouTube. Check, check. No, I might. <laughs> yeah. Jim, can you hear me? We sound good, though. <laughs> I like listening to our show. <laughs> I was trying to time it so I could hear you and then respond, but there'd be a delay. But I can't, I can't hear you. The audio cut out, so... Can you hear Kev? Uh, Hold on, we're, we're so trying. What happened? We're trying to work on it right now. I didn't do anything. No, <laughs> we don't blame. You. I promise. Did you do the? Did can you hear this? We should start writing and hold up signs. <laughs> Not Penny's boat. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear chimes. I can hear people donating money. Hey, you're right, yeah. man. I saw. Oh, some I people heard that. I can hear it. Kevin. All right, you're hearing that now? Beautiful. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, Mark. Hey! Nice. Hit him, Mark. Excellent. Excellent. My question was, like, are you icing your hand? Are you, like, how are you taking care of yourself? This seems like a, like a marathon, not a sprint, and also a sprint. Uh, yeah, it hasn't gotten to that point, but I have done that before. Uh, you know, when I first started drawing comics, I, I wasn't used to drawing, you know, eight, ten hours a day, every day. And uh, I, I used to have to run my, uh, my right hand, uh, you know, under hot, alternating hot and cold water. And I would kind of hunch over and pinch a nerve, and my dad, as a doctor, got me this brace that kind of pulled your shoulders back to kind of alleviate that. But I actually now I just feel a little numbness in my fingertips because I'm holding the pen, like especially with all that line work, you're just doing line after line and uh, pressing down really hard, and it just kind of numbs your fingertips a bit. No. Um, but other than that, I mean, look, I'm sitting in a chair, you know, <laughs> in a well heated room uh, with uh, you know access to the internet. It, it, it's a pretty cushy uh, way to, to, to raise uh, money. It's, it's not like I'm running, you know, 20 miles or something like that. So I'm happy to, to sacrifice the body. Let me ask you this. What is the character you're least looking forward to drawing? I did not catch that at all. What, okay. What's the character? Okay, okay, I can there hear you is. now. What is the character you look least forward to drawing? Like, oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to say because I know that some winner is going to throw it at me, but usually uh, like crypto or any sort of animal creature, right? Uh, yeah, just animals in general like have a different uh, anatomy, right? It's not a human that has that stands on its you know arms and legs. Uh, they have different joints, which – and I can kind of draw one – that looks like a photograph that's a static shot, but to draw an animal in motion, right, to Kirby fight or give it that Buscema kind of fluidity requires really deep understanding of that musculature and how it works. And, uh, you know, I have to kind of fake it most of the time. Like I had to draw a rat one time and I think I, I, I used Chuck E. Cheese as my <laughs> you know, inspiration because I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure out how to draw a rat. And so I had to look to a cartoon to figure out, I don't know, it's tricky, man. You, uh, you know, dr like drawing superheroes and figures is one thing, but doing caricatures and animals, uh, it's a whole different, like kind of subfield of, of artistry. Um, it's an incredibly, uh, wonderful gesture. And we were just saying like, before we even got you on the line, like, you know, not only are you a legendary combo artist, one of the world greats and whatnot, world's greats, but you, you're also, you're a guy that runs like a company as well. You're a businessman. And like, you never hear of like some CEO going like, oh, I'll draw some shit for yeah. charity. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. give up a lot of time. Like, you know, I'm going to make 60 cars in 60 days, says the chairman <laughs> yeah, of Ford. Right. That, that would be awesome. I, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of like my, look, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's my passion and it actually makes the two balance each other out. You know, I mean, there I've, I've been just a freelancer working from home 
Uh, I've done the you know the day job, the uh, the executive uh, work for now uh, ten years at DC. Uh, I ran my own company for many years before that. So uh, I find that they both kind of provide a counterbalance to each other. You know, so when you get when you're working like four o'clock in the morning drawing against the deadline, you go, how can I do this as a living? Like this is so like you know stressful and hard. And so you embrace sort of the normalcy of a regular, you know, nine to six sort of schedule. But then when you're in these endless meetings, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, budgets and whatever, and those are very, usually very exciting. I don't want to put those down, uh, the finance department. So they're super exciting, but sometimes like the numbers can kind of just become a blur and you kind of go like, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to draw tonight. And it's sort of the happy escape from kind of dealing with a day job, right? So, uh, and, and I'm very fortunate in that, you know, uh, DC, Warner Brothers allows me to kind of do both. And uh, it, it's a great balance that I find gives me a lot of happiness and joy. The, um, the, uh, we saw that the D- DC is going to start shipping books in, uh, next week or something like that? Uh, no. So it will be the last week in April. So the week of 428. Yeah. Beautiful. So that in terms, that means stories, new stories will be written and stuff. In terms of the creative, is everybody just writing about COVID in their stories at this point? Is Superman going to be tackling the invisible yeah, enemy? Yeah. Actually, there are already uh, some stories that were coincidentally in our storylines already. Um, but I, I think most creators know not to jump on something this big because you know everyone's going to be tackling it. And how do you do it justice without you know, trivializing it or uh, insulting people with, you know, a particular point of view, particularly since we're still in the middle of it, you know, I think those kinds of stories work best when you use that as inspiration for something bigger and you make a parable or some sort of uh, allegory to something that we, you know, are dealing with in in real life. Um, But as far as like the comic shipping, those are actually the books that didn't ship April 1st, right? Those books uh-huh. didn't ship. So we're actually taking a subsection of those. We're not releasing the whole line. It's like the, the, the marketplace is on a diet. They haven't eaten for like a month. You can't just give them real food and a ton of it at once. You've got to slowly kind of release it back into the, into the pipeline. And the whole idea is to get some books in to basically stress test this new, these new distributors that we've um, partnered with. And we're holding back the big titles like Batman 92, which had over 230,000 copies. We want to wait, hold that for when the most number of eyeballs, you know, can see it and read it. And uh, things like Death Metal, those are likely going to continue to be pushed back until we're, we have more stores up in line. But until then, we want to really, the stores that are open and have figured out ways to be in business, we want to, we want to help them out. We want to give them product to sell. We want to give them the lifeblood that kind of keeps their, their, their businesses afloat. Uh, one last question, and then I'll turn it over to Mark. So during all this time, were, uh, even though Diamond was a distributor, were, were you guys doing digital, or did you stop digital as well? Yeah, we've been doing digital since uh, 2010, yeah, for 10 years. But I mean, uh, even and, during all this, like you could be reading weekly comics digitally, or did you that stop with the weekly books? No, no. Uh, we, we always had weekly comics that were day and date. They came out the same time as the physical uh, books. Um, so we've helped. We, we've you know, they generally come out the same day, and so we're going to continue that. So we won't release Batman 92 in digital form before it comes out in print. And then we had something called Digital First uh, that we innovated about 10 years ago, nine years ago, where we were producing, like, shorter snippets of content, about eight pages worth for 99 cents. It's a product that you can't really sell physically in a store. But then we would – it was just a, kind of a windowing strategy. We had these short bursts of content that people on mobile devices could read – uh, consume in very quick, you know, amounts of time. And then we would, uh, take those and repackage them either as comic books or trade paperbacks. And we had great success when we did uh, a bunch of uh, comics tied to the injustice uh, video game. We did a bunch of digital first comics that were short eight page little mini chapters. And then when we finally collected that into a hardcover book, it sold, you know, tens of thousands of copies in the direct market in the mom, you know, the mom and pop brick and mortar store. So there, are, there is a precedent for being able to do digital, do it right, do it uh, for the native digital reader and figure out a way to sell it also in print later. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're exploring all these things going forward. Very nice. I, uh, I noticed, Jim, on your on your Instagram that other creators, other artists have been kind of 
um, either being roped in by you or jumping on the, on the yeah. 16th chain. Um, how did those guys get involved? Was it literally them just saying, hey, I'd like to be part of this too, or was there outreach on your part, and, and yeah. who, who are some of those guys? No, I, 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 I made it a point when I started uh, that I wouldn't contact anyone just because I, I think, you know, being a publisher, I, I, I would hate to feel like I forced someone to kind of participate. So I didn't reach out to anyone. I figured I would do it, and, and then maybe other people would just – follow by example and do their own thing and do something similar. Uh, but I had artists uh, reach out to me directly, you know, they would, you know, uh, DM me and said, hey, this is cool. How can I be a part of it? So guys like Art Adams, Jeff Scott Campbell, Brian Hitch, uh, Tony Daniel, uh, Joe Bennett. I mean, they've all, uh, and I've got now a, a, a long list of people. I've got uh, Frank Miller is lined up, Bill Sienkiewicz, Walt wow. Simonson, um, you know, uh, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of guys uh, ready to, to, to do more, and I kind of want to spotlight one a day, and it's kind of cool because I can kind of talk a little bit about who they are and what they mean to me and the influences. A lot of these guys are you know huge influences on my own work, and I looked up to them like they were gods to me when I was a kid growing up and reading comic books. So it's great to be able to kind of um, you know put them on a pedestal and kind of tout their work and then see what they come up with because uh, you know Art Adams did this Wolverine drawing. It was just, you know, Mind blowing. I was like, I wonder if I could like bid on this, like, or is that unethical? You know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what they all come up with. Um, what's going to happen to the? To, will, will fans be able to see this art or collect it? Is DC going to collect a book of these and be able to then sell those for charity? Like, or is there, what's the the plans for this going forward? Yeah, I, I think uh, we're, we're we haven't finalized it, but we've had a lot of internal discussions about what we can do with it, and I, you know I think it has to be meaningful and it has to be appropriate, and you know and you know it would be great to time something like that when more stores are open. So I, I think there was a reason when I started, like in the back of head, you know, the, the publisher had on. I was like, you know what, Jim, the artist, you should just draw DC characters because. There's more stuff we can do if you just draw. <laughs> right, right, Jim, the publisher. And so that's what I've done. The other artists have, are jumping in. They can draw whatever they want, um, you know. But but I knew I was foregoing some sales. Like if I did like an X-Men piece or something, I knew I could probably auction that off for a fair amount. But but I, I figured I would stay true to DC and to keep myself – to keep the possibility of doing some sort of project like you guys were mentioning uh, alive. And uh, so we'll see what happens. There's some multi-millionaire X-Man fan somewhere who was like, I was really hoping for a Psylocke single man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it, it's, it's amazing. Look, I, I actually didn't even know if there would be enough people to bid on this stuff, you know, because there's not like, you know, a gazillion art, comic book art collectors. Uh, but it's been very gratifying to see that the winners, there's one guy, a uh, uh, money manager out of Texas that bought like five or six of them. But the rest have gone to different people, and and what you're finding is they're finding their favorite characters, right? Characters like Dead Man or Big Barda, and uh, stuff I've never drawn before, really. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun for me, you know, art artistically, creatively, doing new stuff. And I, and I think these collectors are digging seeing me draw something different outside of my normal comfort zone. Um, it, where can the if if we've got fans watching who have crazy money and stuff uh, based on our ticker right now does not seem to be the case but <laughs> imagine imagine we have somebody watching who's like oh my god I, I totally want this where can they even see uh where can they bid where can they see the selection yeah so if they go to my instagram page uh it's instagram.com slash jim lee uh in my bio there's a link to all the the current auctions on ebay or you can go to eBay and search for username Chunky Monkey uh, 0000, which is me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. Are you so sure that's you? Because I, I think I got <laughs> dick pics from Chunky Monkey 0003 once. That <laughs> was a long time ago. You know, <laughs> when I say West, when I the, say dick pics, of course I mean DC dick right there. <laughs> Just Dick Grayson sketch. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, total. <laughs> yeah, private dick. Uh, um, I was telling these cats right before you gum, uh, jumped on that, like when you were at the house doing Fat Man uh, on Batman, you yeah. drew that gorgeous Harley piece, which hangs in my hallway, framed is fantastic, of Harley like working Batman and Joker puppets, man. Like yeah. I, over the course of the, we we talked two maybe three hours or something like that, and bam, he did this thing. It was so beautiful. So I've seen you work fast. To hear that you're taking your time. And like trying to make it like perfect, like 
take it from an old pro, man. Good enough is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna get there soon, Kevin. I'm, I'm telling you, like I do regret, like not regret, but I, there's a part of me that's going like, what were you thinking? You know, uh, the the non the the Jim Lee, that's not the publisher or the artist, like the the normal the husband, right? The the father is like going, what were you thinking? You knew that that these would get harder and harder to do. And, and sure enough, they've, they've gotten progressively longer and more challenging to complete. And I think it's partly because I want to keep one-upping myself as much as possible. It's beautiful stuff uh, to look at. And Mark's right, man. Collecting all that in the book, like then you yeah. just you get to go yeah. out there and raise more money and stuff. But what a sweet guy you are. You're always such an incredibly uh, kind human being in the midst of working in like, uh, like you, you work for a corporation, you work for Warner Brothers, and you still got a big heart, man. Thank you very much. And, and thank you again for that interview we did years ago. I, I still have so many people come up to me at conventions and, and, and kind of talk about the stuff that we talked about. And, and uh, you know, so it, it was one of definitely the most memorable interview that I've done. Uh, it's it, it's st still to this day. I love Burn Miller. Burn Miller. <laughs> How he runs. You want to see you have anything? I just have one question, man. Um, Growing up, what was your comic book store? Like, where did you where did you first go in and buy comics for the first time? Yeah, so when I was a little kid, like when I was like 10 or 11, I had a banana bike, and I would drive like, I would drive, I would ride my bike for like hours, like this was before cell phones, right? And so I would just leave the house and I'd come back when it got dark, but I would remember riding up along, you know, little, uh, you know, roads and going to a 7-Eleven, that's kind of where I bought most of my comics. And then later, a bookstore carried a small selection and then finally, when I could start driving, there was a store. I, I grew up in St. Louis. There was a, a store about 30 minutes away from me in Kirkwood. But it was a tiny little store. It was uh, next to a railroad track. And it was probably the, it was like probably six feet across and 10 feet deep. Like It was like a, a, a long closet. And it just had like long boxes or short boxes on each side. And, uh, but that's where I bought my comics. I don't remember the name of it. I don't even know if it had a name. It had no signage. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. uh, the owner was friends with Rick Burkett, who's a artist that worked at DC, works at, you know, did Batman Adventures. And he was like the first pro, working pro that I met. And so I, I learned a lot from the the people that actually worked at the store. They kind of mentored me and gave me advice on how to break in and how to improve my work. And we started inking or working on, on small independent projects together. And that was kind of like my triple A kind of experience before I, I broke in at Marvel. Uh, but, Jim, yeah, you so, I mean, it was, more than just a place to buy comics. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, you like the rest of us? Uh, you've seen the images uh, Matt Reeves uh, and the Batman crew have put online and stuff, yeah. and you've probably seen way more than we've seen. Um, how exciting is it to see this incarnation? To see what they're doing this time around with the Batman? As a guy who yeah. has probably drawn Batman more than maybe anybody in this world at this point. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that prolific, but yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I've drawn a lot, and I, I, I'll tell you that I've drawn different incarnations now of the character. And I think you always start from the place that you, like the version that you visualize in your head, because that's the version that you loved as a kid. But then once you've worked on it for a while, you realize, you know, pe everyone had, likes different versions of Batman, long ears, short ears, Kelly Jones, Batman, Neil Adams, Batman. And so you you open yourself up more to the possibilities of, of artistic expression. And so it's exciting to me when you have a filmmaker like Matt come in and do his interpretation of Batman. And you can see some of the influences from even, you know, the Adam West Batman show, uh, the, the fact that he's going very stripped down with the Batmobile, uh, it's very muscular looking and, and the sets are beautifully dark and gothic. And you can see that he's going for something very different but true to the spirit of the character and, um, and, and a real detective story. I mean, he's, I'm not really breaking any news. He said this. Uh, so I think it's really cool that we're going to explore that aspect of the character um, because I think um, there's more to the character than people realize. And there are all these different facets. And, it, and it's great to show sort of the, the broad range that Batman can, can, can be, or like the, the, the type he could be the detective, the crime fighter, the superhero, you know, the brooding loner, the the leader of the Bat family. There's all these different versions of the character, and it's exciting to see what what he's going to deliver. You know, in a world where they just announced uh, Justice League Dark, J.J. Abrams, uh, Bad Robot, doing Justice League yeah. Dark. Who first put Justice League Dark together at DC? Who's whose was that? Who's probably oh, uh, that was something that came out of the New Fifty Two. 
you know, I think we had a bunch. We brought back uh, some of the DC characters that went over to Vertigo and helped seed that line. We felt Vertigo was on its feet, and so we brought back characters like Constantine, Swamp Thing, brought them back into DC where they first started. And I think it was the, the idea of, hey, you can create a team of, of characters that deal with the occult, the mystical side of the, the DC universe, and how that would play sort of uh, a, a counterbalance to the Justice League that take on more traditional, you know, uh, a- alien invasions and traditional supervillains. And so I think it was, um, it came out of that, and uh, it was just a, an interesting way of kind of expanding the Justice League franchise. And so it's exciting to see someone of J.J.'s caliber kind of come in and express interest in this world because we know he's going to do it right. And so it's very exciting to, to see that kind of um, uh, get get that brought into prominence because there was some interest early on uh, years ago and then it kind of waned, uh, kind of the project kind of was put off to the side. So it's great to see it uh, resurrected. Oh my God, that's right. There was Guillermo at yeah, one point Guillermo was working on a version. Yeah. Um, how awesome. We live in a world now where we're going to see Justice League Dark. That's so nuts. And the sky's the limit at this point with like, what is it on? Warner? What, uh, it's going to be HBO Max. HBO Max. So it, like HBO Max seems like those cats are just like, you want to make an expensive DC show? <laughs> Come here. Right, um, right? Yeah. I, I look forward to how much more they're going to be able to pull from you guys' library and stuff. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm a longtime DC guy, so it's an exciting time. Indeed. Um, you're doing the Lord's work, as per usual, sir. <laughs> Thank you for taking time on a Friday night for us. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much. No. Yay, you rock, Jim. man. Everyone give it up for Jim Lee. Woo! Goddamn legend. Thank you, Jim. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Later. Um, come on, man. That's awesome. What a sweet man. What a great guy. Um, and, it, and think about it, all that damn drawing. But you, what a great idea, putting it all into a book. I mean, You're it, smart, dude. You should be running shit. <laughs> With him. You and, you I, and some tells me he'd together. already thought of that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It's so weird. I didn't see that coming. And I'm a writer. This is why I watch movies and I'm like, how did that happen? And I'm like, I should know better myself. Like, I fucking remember watching Mulholland Drive. Remember David mm-hmm. Lynch's movie? Movie ended, I was like, what the fuck happened? What was that all about? And my wife was like, oh, and she explained it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> there it is. I realize I'm not that bright. <laughs> um, all well, right. Uh, so that was fucking thrilling. That and was awesome. technologically, <laughs> we, we got there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I feel fucking good about we, that. We didn't start there, but no. we got there. Um, well done, everybody. Well done. What, um, the, what was your first comic book store? My first comic book store was Katz's Confectionery. In Highlands, New Jersey, not strictly a comic book store, but they had three spinner racks. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, kids, comics. Right. So that's where I bought uh, Secret Wars. That's where I bought um, Vision and the Scarlet Witch. Actually, I subscribed to Marvel for Vision and the Scarlet Witch. That's why I'm excited about WandaVision. <laughs> I always thought that was so romantic. I was like, she, her boyfriend's a robot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, what else did I get there? Uh, remember when they did the Marvel Universe handbook? Oh, yeah. Fucking one of my favorite comics of all time because it had everybody. It wasn't a story. It was just like, this is this motherfucker, and this is what he could do, and this is what she could do, and this are her powers, and this is the fucking team. Like, I love that fucking book. Um, so I used to get all those there. My first bona fide comic book store, I would say, that Walt Flanagan took me to in circa 19, I want to say late 88, early 89, um, was uh, the oh, hobby? No, fuck. What were they called? Hobby shop in Matawan. Okay. Uh, hobby, it was all the way out in Matawan. Hobby shop, Hobby Lobby. It wasn't like that. Wasn't a thing. It I think it was thing. literally called the Hobby Shop. It was like a mom and pop joint. Right. Then I started going to Ray's Collectibles, which was in Middletown near the high school. Uh, then we went to. I mean, we also went to Fantasy Zone in Middletown. They're gone as well. Um, uh, no, they were, Fantasy Zone was in Red Bag. Middletown was Comics Plus. I sold them my comic book collection to mm-hmm. make clerks. Uh, and then the last one was Comicology, which we bought, and that became Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash in 1999. So the stash is now 21 years old. Um, we've been in the retail business for a minute as well. I, I'm, you know, I'm in a good space in as much as if I was strictly a comic book retailer, mm-hmm. I would probably be thinking about closing down. Let me tell you a fucking story, man. This is like just a dopey story about how you never fucking know. So I called up, I was talking to Walt mm-hmm. Flanagan. Walt, I got the store for in the first place. Like, you know, one time we were driving around 
like long before I made Clerks, and he, he would come back from a comic book uh, shopping. Like we would drive around the state and try to find comic book stores that we'd never been to, look for like fucking copies of The Killing Joke that hadn't gone up on a wall yet. If you find some unsuspecting small mom and pop shop, you're like, oh shit. Um, so we were driving home, and you know, I was like, this rocks, fucking comics, right? And he was just like, um, I always wanted to run a comic book store. And I was like, fuck yeah, man, own a comic book store would be amazing. He goes, not own it, that's too much responsibility. He said, I'd always wanted to run a comic book store because I could get a big discount on my books. And what a great job that would be. So, you know, years later, after Clerks and Mallrats and shit, this opportunity to take over comicology uh, came about, <clears throat> and it was very inexpensive, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. um, it was only double what I paid to make Clerks. So if Clerks was 27575 bucks, Comicology, uh, I could take it over for 60 grand. Like, that's all the contents, the, the, of the store, the fucking client list, and you know, you're paying rent and shit for where the place you're taking it over. But I was like, for, for double what I paid for clerks, Walter, his dream could fucking come true. Mm. So I was like, you know what? It's worth it. And so I, I was told uh, Steve Dave, the guy that had Comicology, uh, I'll do it. And then I told Walt, hey man, fucking, I bought a Steve Dave store and we're gonna call it Jay and Son Bob Secret Stash, you're gonna run it. And he's like, no, I'm not. It took me two years <laughs> to convince him <laughs> to leave his job at the, the Highlands Recreation Center and run the store full time. He was running it from a distance. He'd order all our, our books and stuff like that. Brian was the front man, Brian Johnson. But, you know, Walt knew that world like crazy. So the store was bought for Walt. He eventually came and he's been there ever since. And it's been open all this time. Not because of me, I'm never fucking there. Walt Flanagan, master retailer and shit. Mike Zapsick as well, get him. Uh, you know, it, it, they got a great crew. Johnny does the mail order and stuff. So I called up Walt to be like, well, a lot of stores closing and we've had a great run, like over 20 years. This is longer than we ever imagined and shit. And you know, who knows, do, does it bounce back? and you know, you're the boot, I told him, I was like, you're the boots on the ground guy. You're there every fucking day. Like, if it was your money, would you keep it open? Would you keep the secret stash open or should we just close up? And uh, he goes, if it was my money, he's going, I'd keep it open. I said, really? He goes, oh yeah. I said, but I fucking only got the store for you, and you don't even collect comics anymore and shit. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, but the store is bigger than me. He's going, people... Love this place. It's like a living organism. He's going, and also he's going, you got a lease until the end of the year, right? He's going, just sooner or later we'll get to open again. If mm -hmm. after a few months nobody coming back, then have that conversation. But like he said something so pointy. He goes, I, when I closed the door the other day, I didn't think that was the last time I was ever going to close the door on the stash. He's going, like, I always thought, he's going, do you ever see the, the end of Mary Tyler Moore, the last episode, when like they literally turned the lights off, he was like, I, I thought that's how the stash would end. He's going, so I, I would keep it going. And I was like, fucking A, man. As the guy least likely, I told him, Walt, like, fucking, I've known you almost 30 fucking years and you continue to surprise me. I honestly thought he would have been like, ugh, <laughs> like I'm done. Like this, this is some shit we did when we were kids. Like, fuck this store. I want to go back to a normal life. I, he's got, like, the Patreon, tell him Steve David and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, I thought he'd be like, yeah, let it go. But even he was just like, don't. Don't let it go, man. So it's tough uh, out there for retailers. Uh, not for me as particular. I got the luxury of being like, all right, we can weather this storm because I got other jobs and mm -hmm. shit like that. Uh, for other retailers, not so easy. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, this is a fundraiser for Bink. What is Bink? Bink is the Bink Foundation is a company that's helping provide le relief, financial relief, to independent booksellers and more, you know, pertaining our demographic, comic book stores. Yeah. Um, so yeah, every donation to them uh, will find its way, you know, to a comic book store that's in your life that you know needs some help. Um, who? We got another guest? We got another guest. We have, uh, we have Car D'Angelo. Um, you got who, him? Yeah, we're getting car right now. And everybody be getting getting good at little, being a little studio now, I right? Know. In the age of COVID, like everybody, like Seth Meyers has to shoot his own show. Fucking, <laughs> we're, we're going live to our field team now, Matt. Thanks. 
We are the only two that haven't really gotten better at this shit because we got JC. <laughs> We've got Carr. Um, we, got another guest. we got another guest. We have, uh, we have Carr oh. D'Angelo. Um, got him? Am I there? Oh. And everybody be getting, getting good. Oh, at yeah. It. Hey, yeah. Carr, yeah. turn your YouTube down. Uh, yeah. COVID, like okay. As, as they used to say on the Howard Stern Show, turn your radio down. Oh, there we down. go. There we are. How are you, Carr? Good. How are you guys doing? So good, damn man. fucking good, man. Look yeah. at this place. It's hopping. It's crazy. It's <laughs> Friday great, night. That was a great story you just told about Walt, because that's how, that's how I feel too. It's 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 the shop. Anybody who has a comic book shop, you know this is it is bigger than you. It's not just about me. It's not just about the staff. People have created a community about their shop that is something that you don't even you don't even, you say you're the owner, but you don't even really own it anymore. They they all own it. Uh, this, folks, is Car, Car runs and owns, uh, what is it called? Earth 2 Comics. Earth uh, 2. They have two locations. There's one in Sherman Oaks and one in Northridge. And one you own with Jeff Johns, right? Yes, yeah. Jeff's our partner in the Northridge store. Um, how sweet. Like a guy, You know, like you rarely hear about <laughs> somebody going, I'm going like, to go into the retail. Like most creatives stay out of the retail end. I think it's cool that he went into retail. Yeah. That's neat, man. Um, okay, so... You are a, a real, honest to goodness, uh, uh, dyed in in the wool, boots on the ground uh, retailer. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Is it a scary time? Uh, you, you just said wonderful words about, you know, hey man, it's bigger than us and shit. But like that only goes so far uh, if you run out of loot. How are you handling all this? I mean, it, it is scary. It, it is a, it is a, you know, it is a tough time. Um, you know, we're doing our best with, um, you know, and, and we're in LA, so you know, there's, you know, this is even one of the stricter kind of lockdown uh, communities. So it's been very tough because you know our doors aren't open. But what we've been trying to do is, you know, again, take care of use of reservists, take care of all the subscribers. We've got their books. If they haven't been in for a month, we don't want them to have to wait a couple more months. So we're trying to get that stuff to them. But it's a it's a lot of work for not what we do because we're the kind of store where we like to have people come in and browse and find things that they wouldn't normally buy and we stock you know we stock deep we're not just you know we order subscription copies plus one for the shelf we have stacks of 10 or 20 because we really want to you know make recommendations and get people excited about you know certain books so it's really hard when you can't do that kind of a hand selling now, uh, did you read about like uh, DC or we just had Jim on? He's going, hey man, yeah. in April we're getting books out into retailers' hands again and stuff like that. Is that a welcome relief or is it a band aid? Like, on it's I mean, it's all kind of tricky because I mean, Diamond also released a statement today how they're aiming for sort of mid May to get their their wheels running again. I think that's kind of a um, I think that's kind of a schedule that's more on par with. What a lot of the uh, with what what's going on around the country. I think most people expect to be open more mid May or end of May. So um, you know the DC news it came down today. It's a lot to swallow, but it it, it it's hard. It, <laughs> it, it, there's a lot to think about there because it's not as it, it, it is a new startup type of thing. So it's also asking a lot of from retailers who kind of want a certainty and being told to go to some new distributors that we haven't worked with before is kind of a uh, you know, uh, we need more stability than uncertainty. So, you know, it's it, 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 it's 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 a step, but we're you know, I'm in interested to see where it all goes. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. Um, so, and how are you personally doing? I mean, how, what is it like being a, an independent sort of businessman in a world in which you can't do your independent business? You know, how is how's your mindset? How's your family? You know, how have you get to interact with your customers very much and find out how they're doing? Well, I used to say, wow, it would be great if like the store was closed for a bit so I could process all those back issues that have been building up. And I guess I should not have I should not have wished for that because like I'm in my yeah. office right now. And if I turn the camera, you'd see about like nine boxes, nine short boxes of back issues. So I'm trying to prep and get stuff priced and keep working that way. Um, one of my managers is handling a lot of the mail order stuff where I'm doing, I'm doing like the customer communication, invoicing, you know, getting paid through PayPal and then giving him the list of these are the things, you know, we can send out. But it's, it, it, it's you know, we started um, on Facebook. In addition to having Facebook pages, we also started a community, uh, Earth 2 Comics community, so that our regulars and our subscribers could kind of interact and, you know, just sort of, you know, to keep in touch. So when we have something to announce, you know, again, when new, everybody, that's the question everyone's asking, when are new comics 
going to be released again. So when I have some news, I take it there. I let them know what's going on. Um, you know, Diamond put like the previews catalog online for free. Normally you have to buy it for, you know, buy that phone book for four bucks. Um, they put it on online for free. So we wanted to let everybody know that. So at least while they're home, they could flip through and let us know what they want to order in the future and try and keep, try and keep the old habits, you know, going. No doubt, man. Like, cause when everything goes, that's what people I think are going like, that was Walt's point when I was talking to Walt about closing. Cause I was like, is anybody going to care like after all this like this is a world fucking changing event and even if they do care does anybody have any money a lot of people out of work and we're not selling anything fucking essential it's all like fun stuff and whatnot but walt's point was i think people are going to fucking crave normalcy um crave going back to routines and yes like the world's been upended and stuff and some things will never go back to quote unquote normal but running a retail shop like you know it's not like uh, a comic book store is not like running a fucking concert hall where it's like man if we don't have two thousand bodies in here how are we going to pay for this and stuff comic book store you can like all right you come in now you go out and stuff mm -hmm. like that so maybe when we all get to come back out there are a bunch of people who are just like i, I this will make me feel normal again this is my comfort food like this is like the thing that I shape my identity around, so I'm going to the store. Maybe I mean, I know I've seen like a lot of dire prognostications online, um, but I feel like it might also work in another direction where people are like, I've missed you for so long. I've missed my retail establishment. Like Mark asked a great question, which I'd never even thought of when he was like, how are you doing with your clients? Like just the right. people that come into the fucking store, the relationships that you build. You're like fucking Sam Malone for, for Christ's sakes and cheers. <laughs> like what is Norm and Cliff doing right now? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, yeah, they, I mean, it's, it, I mean, exactly. So, I mean, there's a lot of that outreach and talking to people and again, wanting, you know, what one, you know, great story is I got an email out of the blue from a guy who said, Hey, do you have saga volume five through nine? And when I looked him up in our system, he bought volumes one through four about three years ago. <laughs> I guess he finally got around to reading them. And <laughs> he wanted got to read the rest and was like, "I got it." And but he came to us, and that that was the really like nice thing. He didn't he didn't go to Amazon. He didn't go to you know a big mail order place. He said, "Hey, these you know a lot of people will say if you introduce me to something that I love, I want to I want to follow that with you. You know, if I started reading Batman or Saga or whatever with you guys, I'm going to always come back to you guys. You know, um, for that. So there is that 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 that, uh, that customer contact that really does have to be maintained." They trust you. You give them something good once. Yeah, you know, sure. they're like, ooh, I like that. Yep. You give them twice, man. You got them for life and shit. When, before the pandemic, um, how were you guys doing as a retail establishment? It, it was, you know, the beginning of this year was very tricky. Um, you know, part of it is, you know, there's always a, there's always an issue sort of with the publishers, you know, they never really launched like the big, except for like the one time a couple of years ago, uh, Marvel did Star Wars number one when they relaunched Star Wars yeah. in January. And that was great. That was that was really and it's Star Wars. What's you know what's what's not comics that's bigger than Star Wars, right? So you put those two things together and it was a monster. And it got people coming in who hadn't been into the comic shop for a while. And but normally the publishers kind of take January and February off anyway. So it's because there's not the big events, there's not the big product. A lot of stuff kind of wrapped up at the end of the year, like Doomsday Clock and things like that, that were the big events people were following. So it had been kind of a quieter time. Um, and I think for us, too, in February, again, a lot of the, you know, in, in Los Angeles, a lot of the social distancing talk and all of that really kind of started mid to end February, beginning of March. And it kind of, um, you know, we, we kind of saw a slowdown kind of be, be, be beginning. Um, but again, as you say, we, there, there's, always, there's always something, you know, you know coming out later that's going to be that's going to be exciting or just different ways you know to to get your get your customers excited get fans back in the store you can always wait it out you, we've been through a lot of ups and downs and we've always been able to wait you know wait things out um but this is kind of tricky because it is it's you know and but but i do agree with you kevin that maybe keeping people from the shop might create <laughs> hopefully creates a lot of interest once shops are open and once the material is released again. And I think that's why a lot of shops have wanted kind of a uniformity of how the comics get released, because I think it's better as sort of like a big event, you know, like the way I think they announced that they're holding back 
Bat, you, know, you know, as Jim said, they're holding back Batman 92 because you want to make sure everybody can get that book at the same time because it's been so anticipated, the beginning of Joker War and all of that. You don't want to just, you know, oh, you know, some stores are going to have it in, 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 uh, in April and other stores are going to have it in May. So it makes sense to kind of let the momentum build for that. You talked, uh, you had a really good example of uh, how uh, the cat ordered Saga from you as opposed to going to Amazon and stuff. That's one way to help out Earth 2 uh, and or your local comic book store. Yeah. Um, what are other ways that folks um, who, you know, and again, we're not guilting anybody. If you can help, help. But if, <laughs> if you're passionate about the field, if you're passionate about yeah. the, the, the milieu of comic books and comic book stores, what can they be doing right now? Uh, to help out you guys? Uh, yeah, I've been asked this a lot. One of the things I've been saying is, is you know, is buy a gift certificate because that's like the easiest low impact thing for us right now. So if you know it's a store you're going to go back to, and, you know, um, you know, if you don't know exactly what you want, if there's a book you want, you know, they have it. Great. Order that book. We'll mail order it to you. But a lot of times, a lot of stores, you can do a gift certificate. So call up and say, I want a $10, $20 gift certificate. If you don't want to ever use it, if you want to make it a donation, you can do that. Or it's just going to be there waiting for you when the store opens. Um, you know, the thing not to do is to call and say, oh, this is finally the time I'm going to find out if you have that random issue of Champions from you know, 1975, and if you have that, I'll buy it from you. Because then you're making me run around for two hours, All right. you know, looking for a three dollar book, um, and you're not doing me any favors. But you know, but I think the things of just trying to, you know, again, reach out, um, say hi, you know, and you know, like I say, and if it's something like, you know, hey, I know they're going to have, I know they're going to have Long Halloween, I know they're going to have Killing Joke, I know they're going to have Saga or something like that. Maybe they can send me a copy of that because I want to read that again. But if it's something you just want to kind of donate or help out, I think you know, calling or emailing and asking about a, a gift certificate is the easiest thing to do. Sweet, man. Excellent advice. You got I, uh, I, I, I have known Carr for a long time. For a <laughs> very long time. I am curious, and this has nothing to do about comics, I'm just curious to hear your version of how we got to know each other because I'm sure it's a little different than mine. Um, and, so, and we've never talked about you know, from your perspective, the first time we met, our history, and, and how it has sort of evolved over the years. Oh my God, now I'm scared, because now I'm afraid that I insulted you or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just you um, wait, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember, well, we both worked for Starlog Magazine. We did, yes. But we didn't work for what? there at the same Starlog. time. You both worked for Starlog? Yeah, he was, he was like two generations. He was two classes ahead of two me. Two generations. Oh, shit. He was two classes ahead of me. I was, I was a junior when he was already graduated. That's right. Okay. That's, and, and, that's... and everybody who got my job after me went to work for DC Comics. And, and I, I was always very annoyed because I have a letter from Paul Levitz where he, where he said, we're not hiring right now. And so I left New York. And then everybody who worked there, had my job after me, worked for DC Comics, except Mark, who then, I think, went to Entertainment Weekly or whatever. Yeah. but uh, That's yeah. geek bona fides, man, to be able to say you worked Starlog for I know. Sake. Like, and when I got there, that was, that was always the narrative, was that everybody who works here goes to work for DC Comics, except for Car D'Angelo, who went to Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. but, but what I remember was like a San Diego, I, I forget how we... Got we must have swapped numbers or something, but we met up or ran into each other or set something up at San Diego. I thought, and the first time we kind of really met face to face was didn't we we get like drinks or something at some uh, hotel? Uh, it was very romantic. It was like a hotel bar in I, San Diego. <laughs> I think it was. It was like the top of the Hyatt or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but I also think it was either before that or just after that because he was an executive at Universal, and oh, yeah. I was I was a young wannabe screenwriter. And I was like, I got an in. I know a guy. He works for Universal. I'm going to have a meeting in his office. And I went and had a meeting in his office, and nothing ever came of it except you sent me, I want to say, the script for Reality Bites. And you were like, read this. And I did. He's like, what do you think? I'm like, I think this is probably good. And he says, yeah, we do too. And that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mark Bernard got Reality Bites Greenlit. That's what I hear in that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Ben Stiller fucking owes you. I know. And then like I'm like you know jockeying and doing my shit back in New York. I'm like someday, man, I'm gonna go back and pitch car. And I'm gonna get him to buy something. And he's like, I gave up on Hollywood. I'm opening a comic book store. <laughs> I was like, the 
one guy I knew walked away from fucking Hollywood. That tells your story. Man. That tells your story right there. <laughs> Smart play, Carr. <laughs> Um, how's it been? Uh, how's it felt to be a retail? How many years now are you retailing? 17. Um, you know, so in 2003 we opened. Um, and, I, and yeah, I think you had, and you had the store in, I, I forget, you had the store in Westwood back then too. Yeah, yeah, we were there for, how long were we there? A couple of years. Um, but uh, ours back home, it turned 20 when we were doing the show. We opened in 90, late 97. So at the end of this year, December this year, it'll be 23 years. Um, and, and it's, but that's not me. I haven't run it for 23 years. Right. Uh, Walt did all that stuff. But having a store um, yeah. is incredible uh, currency in the culture. Um, just like being from New Jersey has right. been incredible currency in the culture. <laughs> <laughs> having like, oh yeah, we got a brick and mortar store, man. Like uh, it's, and as you know, it's not as easy to keep a comic book concern going. You've done it for nearly 20 yeah. years, man. Like, uh, what are you going to do for the 20th? What's the anniversary look like? Um, I mean, we'll do, you know, well, one of the things, actually, the next year, I want to make a big deal because it's actually like the anniversary, like the 60th anniversary of Flash discovering Earth 2 in the comics. It happened ah. in 1961. So, uh, so that'll sort of, so on that day, I want to celebrate. I so that I wasn't even thinking yet about 2023. Good gosh, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, Brian, you know, Brian Hibbs up in, uh, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of guys I know who've been having stores for 30 years, Joe Field in in, in Concord, they've had, they're having a 30th anniversary, and it's like wow. So um, so yeah, I mean, we'll do something big. I mean, we always like to have, you know, again, big events, big sales, and I think that's one of the things that's going to impact us as well is. You, know, you were saying we might have to be like a one person at a time in the store, uh, but part of the fun of having a store is when you have. You know, we've had Jim Lee at the um, uh, sign at the store, uh, but it was also it was under the guise of also selling his daughter's Girl Scout cookies. It was a, it was a fun day. <laughs> uh, it, it was really it was really it was really to bring people together to buy Girl Scout cookies. But you know, you have a big event like that. But that's that's more what I'm concerned about is is not having being. I, I hope in 2023 I'll be able to have a really huge. 20th anniversary event because you know we've done we do like tent sales in the back and stuff like that and it would be kind of a thing of really wanting to have not just a sale but have a party have guests have the people who you know some of the people who've really um supported the shop over uh the years you know we're lucky to be in los angeles and have those you know have those visitors you know like you know kirkman and people like that who pass through all the time uh, just because this is where, you know, you know, uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, seeing the store and seeing the business, um, from, from 2003, the great part has been is seeing how, um, you know, the Marvel, uh, you know, the Marvel cinematic universe and, you know, how the geeks inherited the earth and really took over. And so many of those guys, the showrunners, the producers, you know, we you know now it's you don't have to hide your you know uh, you know used to be able to go no I'm not reading a comic book you know uh, don't make fun of me or whatever you know it was a bit like that where I grew up and um, and you know and, and then it, now it's become a thing of like oh you're you're reading comic books that's really cool uh, and that's been a great thing to see so damn true outstanding um, car you you helped with that you helped a lot with that Kevin so thank you you're too sweet man I I love when people are like hey man you fucking helped I'm like no I didn't yeah. I just I literally talked about shit that I loved like <laughs> it was it wasn't even like I want to help the community it was it was not altruistic it was like I love this shit and honestly I can't talk about anything else <laughs> try talking to me about politics car it falls fucking apart but like you see my face lit up where I was like 1961 is the anniversary of Earth 2 <laughs> yeah I think it's like June That's 5th so or June 15th I can't remember the exact date I think it's because he holds up a newspaper Barry Allen holds up a newspaper in Keystone City and it has the exact date. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh my God, that's genius. Um, all right, man. Well, thank you for taking the time, Carr. You got you. anything else for Carr? I do not, man. Just, uh, you know, stay safe. I thank hope you, you guys uh, can, can keep the lights on when we're all on the other side of this because, uh, you know, I, I like a store that I can drop in and I know the guy. And if you want to help out Carr and Earth 2, either of the locations, uh, hit the website up, get one of the gift certificates, man. Yeah, and like if, if those aren't the stores near you, if you've got a different store, then I think Carr's advice is sound all across the board. 
Yep. Buy a gift certificate. You know, buy, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks. Buy a couple of comics for yourself in the future today. Like the man said. Thank you, Carr. Thank you. All right, be good. Great seeing you. Look at that, man. We did like two fucking guests. We We're did, like, man. I feel like Regis. <laughs> We're <laughs> this is nuts. Stay tuned for the replacements. <laughs> <up next. laughs> We're going to talk about comics. <laughs> um, we got news, don't we? We got some news, man. This is why I come to the fucking show. I loved our guests. They were informative as fuck. But I come to learn about the news. Some shit I know when we come in. Some shit I don't. So it's always fun for me and stuff. Uh, Mark Bernardin is an old news hound. Mm. And even though he's become a big shock creative, the news instincts, the nose for news, <laughs> never goes away, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Bernardin hunted down some news for us. Give it up for Mark Bernardin and his news. Hey! Woo, news. Rock and hey. Before oh. you dive into your news, can I do a little news? You want to do some news? Do it. Uh, here in Los Angeles on uh, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, Sunday, starting Sunday, 419. And going to 426, uh, April, 20, April 19th, April 26th, uh, uh, through Postmates, mm -hmm. you can order movies. Uh, we're doing a movies pop-up when we're allowed to open back up uh, <laughs> the world and stuff with the good folks that did Saved by the Max. Mm -hmm. They did the Good Burger restaurants. So they take a restaurant, make it look like a restaurant. Did for they a do McDowell's? They, I don't know if they did McDowell's. Oh. I'll find out. But uh, they've done, it's that sort of thing. Right. So they're going to do movies as well. So uh, in the midst of all this pandemic and whatnot, uh, they came up with a really cool idea. Like, we're going to do these movie meals. Like, you know, like it looks like a fucking fun, you know, fun, what do they call it? Happy, yeah, happy meal. meal. And um, it's got... Fun eats. Yeah, no. fun. A good time, put shit in your mouth box. <laughs> Boy, I really just blanked on Happy Meal. <laughs> Which it tells you two things. There are two words that I'm not familiar with anymore. Happy and meal. Because <laughs> all I do is eat fucking potato chips and read the news going like, fuck, I mean, at least they're vegan potato chips. Talk about a reformed fat kid who's like... Happy meals. I have no meals that are happy. Yeah, lost them. <laughs> After the heart attack, no more happy meals. Unhappy meals for the rest of my life because I'm vegan. So we're doing, speaking of vegan, both happy, uh, both movies, <laughs> happy meals, both movie meals. You could do vegan style. You could do non-vegan style. They're doing a lasagna witch, movies, messy lasagna witch, which is lasagna on bread. It's delicious. Mm. Uh, they're doing an order of hater tots, which are just tater tots. And, uh, but named in honor of Jane Silent Bob Reboot. And it comes with chocolate covered pretzels, either vegan or non vegan. Nice. Really cool. Also comes a little signed Kev autograph. Uh, the news was met very well uh, this week. We're donating all the money uh, that we raised to uh, uh, Know Us Without You, which is a charity uh, that feeds people that, you know, in the midst of the pandemic. Mm. So, you know, it's a nice thing if you're doing it, you, you know, because you don't have to be ordering off Postmates and shit. But if you are and you're like, I can't cook and shit for a week, including on 420, which is Monday, um, you can literally order some movies. There's limited supply that once they're gone, they're gone. Each one has a little Kev autograph in it and shit like that. But it's the response has been so well is uh, they've there has been t I know a fucking few people. <laughs> There has been talk about doing it beyond Los Angeles. Ooh. So if you're postmating in other parts of this great country of ours and you're like, man, I want to be in on that, um, hold that thought uh, because, you know, it seems like we're going to be indoors for a long time. So this is a movable feast. So we'll let you know more. But as of Sunday, order movie meals off Postmates, man. It'll be a good time. And then order one and have it sitting there on 420, because on 420, mm -hmm. which is my people's fucking holiday, we're going to do a Mall Rats watch along Ooh. on Facebook. Focus, the good folks at Focus are putting together these screenings, free screenings where people do watch alongs and stuff. I think like somebody way better than me did it like last week, like fucking Wes Anderson or some such shit. Uh, somebody like real legit. But they reached out to me, and they were like, you made Mall Rats, right? I was like, fuck yeah, I made Mall Rats. I'm writing a sequel right now. So we're going to do a Mall Rats watch along. Uh, it'll be a good time. I'm, I'm, you don't see me. I think I'm typing, mm. uh, from what I understand. But uh, uh, that starts tomorrow night. I think it's like 7 o'clock or something. You look for details online. Get your movies meal from Postmates if you're in Los Angeles. Uh, if you're everywhere else, uh, 420 Mall Rats watch along. Let now, me ask you a that's question. That's my news. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Is there, and if there is not, there should be, a uh, 420 parade? 
Well, not this year, Mark. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on in the world, and I don't know if you've seen these gloves, but I'm yeah, just, no, I've never seen it. There should be, though. I mean, because not for nothing. They're like, I, I'm imagining lots of floats covered in green. Um, I'm imagining you as the grand marshal of this motherfucker. Every year. Every year. Like you, <laughs> and then like, you know, Snoop is the MC, and like, there's there's enough. If there's a parade he be the for grand every, marshal, well, let's be honest. Uh, two grand Thank marshals. you for your kindness, but it should be Snoop. Two grand marshals. marshals. I'll go. I'll just put me on any float. <laughs> just give me a float. <laughs> um, like it seems as if that's kind of a no. Late in life stoners. Like I'm on that. Float. <laughs> <laughs> Betty White. Hey everybody. <laughs> What have I got to lose? There I'm should 90. be a fucking stoner parade. You're right. One of the first things we're going to get to work on when all this fucking pandemic is over, mm. stoner parade. 42021, ladies and gentlemen. Sadly, 42020. It's, yeah. It's not going to happen. But 42021, okay. Mark Bernardin's stoner parade. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom I have a parade and Really what's it that's for That's what we're raising money for tonight Ladies and gentlemen Stoner The parade. Mark Bernard and Stone Parade No we're raising money for the good folks at Bink What is it called? Bink Foundation Bink Foundation What does it stand for? I don't really know Money That's what it stands for <laughs> And mean, it's money that goes to small bookstore uh, yeah. owners But we're doing it for the comic book folks particularly Indeed And yeah. right now if we look at the old tote board Well look at that Ooh. It's up to 1320 we're 1345 half, we, just gotta, oh, we just got another 25 bucks We're over halfway to our goal yeah, tonight of $15 from Phil Rizzuto From the money store? Do you see <laughs> Can you see names come up? No Oh, I was like, you got good eyesight. <laughs> Phil Riz I'm Phil Rizzuto from the money store. Tom Carvel. <laughs> he gives his money like this. Yes. Hello. Welcome to Carvel. My name's Tom, Tom Carvel. Tom. Wednesday is Sunday at Carvel. Do you oh, have a kid a that you like? He, does he like Fudgy the Whale? I've got a Fudgy cake just for him. And what was it? And Cookie Puss. And Cookie Puss. The hottest fucking ice cream cake <laughs> on the planet. Every boy wanted Cookie Puss. Um, Tom Carvel, man, that's... The days of like, I'm the guy that owns the company and they've made me fucking talk about it in a commercial. That's over. Nobody would ever do that shit again. They'd be like, get somebody and hire a Tom Carvel. This guy sounds like he's disinterested in his ice cream because he did. Oh, he was, he was like a, a chain smoking like Detroit <laughs> businessman. Yes. It wasn't like fucking like, he was like, hey kids, you like ice cream? It was more like, Wednesday is Sunday at Carvel. Am I done? I don't want to talk about this shit. Today is President's Day, and so we just put a hat on Cookie Puss because now he's George Washington Cookie Puss. He became Puss. the Shamrock as well, <laughs> and Fudgy the Whale became something else. But the commercial like, was always so, like, if you were into food, it was food porn because, mm. like, look at us pouring the ice cream in this mold and shit. You just want to be like, oh. But then you would have this guy going, Carvel ice cream is so good. Come to Carvel. And they never showed him. Probably for the best. No, yes. It was always just like glory shots of the fucking food. Money shots of the food. The most like incongruous voice ever. If he was still around, they should have got you see that offer? They offered the one guy, the sports dude, mm. a million bucks to do the play by play <laughs> on some cam girls. I think it was on <laughs> Pornhub or something like that. And he was like, I don't know what his name is, mm. Jock something. Um, I don't That's follow true. sports. But in any event, uh, other people were like, like I saw Ralph tweeted, he's like, I'll do it. <laughs> Let me in there. Um, but we could get, if he was alive, if only Tom Carvel to be like, all right, they're fucking now. <laughs> what is this? What's the pooper? What the hell? Is Wednesday is Sunday. And even like if he gets like, okay, Jenna, she's uh, flipping the other girl upside down. And things are happening here. I'm not sure what. I think that might be a cookie puss, but it's not made of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I've never felt dirtier saying the word cookie puss. Yeah, that, that was the same era of Crazy Eddie. The prices are insane. insane. One of the greatest salesmen of our lifetime and shit. Oh, I know there's some scandals surviving, surrounding him or some such shit, but like our, those commercials were delightful. And nobody does that shit anymore either. No. They were so low rent and so easy. <laughs> Guy just screaming at the com camera. <laughs> Crazy Eddie, our prices are insane. Remember they would do the lineup of fucking like in Manhattan, the Bronx, Syosset. <laughs> <laughs> They listed fucking names of places. I'm like, Syosset? That's Where the fuck place? is that? When I was on the Jane Silent Bob Reboot Road Show tour, mm. fucking went through Syosset. You did? And I was like, I've heard of you! Crazy <laughs> Eddie knew you! The border of Nassau and Suffolk County. Is it? Yeah. So you've been there? I have. There was a really great movie theater in Syosset. The fuck? What yeah. else goes on in Syosset? Uh, not very much at all. Sounds like <laughs> such like a New York outside Manhattan. Yeah. It sounds, is it Long Island? Or it's not? Long Island, yeah. 
That sounds like such a Long Island name. Like what? Patchog? Yeah. It's, it's like Long Island was where they let the Indian places retain their identity as but, opposed to New Jersey where they just made everything Cherry Hill. <laughs> you wait a second. You mean Cherry Hill is not <laughs> a, Native a Native American, American name? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Iroquois did not name Highl- it. Cherry I come Hill. from Highlands. That sounds like it could totally be a it, it Native could be. American name. You know, Matawan might still be uh, an Indian name, for all I know. <laughs> but Middletown, less so. Well, I mean, you know, that's like. I mean, that's like every town's got every every state's got a Middletown. But I think it's funny. You're like they took it all and they changed every fucking name. And you're like, well, not Matawan, not Matawan, and probably not this one. And you know what? I'm gonna yeah. Back, but Long Island is, is literally. It's like this this weird like oh, Copeg, you know, Massapequa, Massapequa. Sayacid. What a great name. Um, all right. Yeah. Anyway. News. Mark's got real news. <laughs> I got real news. Like, we're doing Crazy Eddie news and shit. <laughs> People are like, is it coming back? Probably uh, not. I mean, the first item is, I think, the item that we all knew was a going to happen because we talked about it Ugh. last time. Are we going to open with the bad news? can we do all the happy news first and then fucking It's the go big there. news. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. News. Tighten your assholes. <laughs> Get your sphincters good and tight because something you're about to hear something nobody wanted to hear, but... We all knew we were going to hear anyway. Say it, because I don't want to say it because they hate the messenger. Go ahead. Mark's about to tell you <laughs> something really me. fucking horrible. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Comic-Con 2020 has officially been canceled. What? Let's get Mark Bernard in, everybody. <laughs> he canceled Comic-Con. <laughs> um, yeah, this, I mean, here's what I've been thinking. I ran into a kid I was in Ralph's like two weeks ago, and, um, you know, because of this show, because, like, I don't know, for the last 25 years, I've been like, I like comic books. He was just like, hey, man, is Comic-Con going to happen this year? Like, I was, you know, a foremost authority. And I was you got like, your ear to the ground, son. Tell me about Comic-Con. Kind of. And I was like, oh, come on. That could, how could it not happen? I was like, that's too big. To, it's too big to cancel. <laughs> just too big to fail. And apparently, like, South by Southwest was like, we're too big to cancel. And Comic-Con's like, hold my beer. Yeah. Uh, they're going uh, away for the year, they've said. Uh, they won't be back till 2021. Yeah. The first time in 50 years. 50 years. There won't be a Comic-Con. Now you know we're in history right here. That's what I'm telling you. Like, how does every fucking thing that's written from now on, that's set in the present, not like some period piece, not reference this like it's so fucking massive you have to it's got to show up in the comic books yeah i mean it'll be like this markers of 2020 will be the like covid pandemic and vaping like that's how you'll know exactly when you were in time it's like oh look at these douchebags vaping oh that's right that was right around the time everyone started getting hey man you might have just found a link between those two things just saying let's not be specious we have no scientific (laughs) information we're two guys wearing gloves in a bar that's Which, it. you know, in some places that makes us scientists. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we are not. In We're not. Way. We trust, trust me. I am a yeah. doctor, though, but not of medicine. I got one of those honorary doctorates. Nice. Can you prescribe? Yeah, uh, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I really, and I've tried. Um, you can prescribe advice. What it's the better. fuck are we going to do in July, Mark? That <laughs> was my beginning of the calendar year. Mm. That's like, that's, it's you know. Geek fiscal year day one. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um, I, it makes sense, of course. I was thinking about it after I talked to that kid in the, in the Ralphs and so you self-assuredly fucking told him that it was happening and shit. But it's like, even if they were like, open the doors in the country in mid-May, let's say June, like, you know, that's, that's a, yeah. It seems like, an exp- it seemed like the attendance was going to be way low anyway if they even allowed it to happen because right now they're still not saying, yeah, let's cram fucking, you know, 200,000 people yeah. into a space real close and shit. Yeah. So I mean, I, the, the governor has already pretty much said that like California will not be open to like large gatherings, concerts, conventions. You know, they're still even debating movie theaters, but they're 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 not going to like open like professional sports. Like, no, we're gonna, not going to cram 45,000. We people. might be in the right space because I'm under like. You know, this, what, 50 people, you think? We can, yeah, like, spaced out? No? Yeah, I think, I, think, uh, I figured out we could do about 40 people. Spaced if we, out? If we could open and be spaced out six feet. 40 people, that's a fucking show. That is a show. That is an audience. I've right done there. to some less than that. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> um, sometimes to a dog. That's my show. I'm like, your watch. Hey, guys, I got your food. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hold me. this food here. Listen to my monologue. 
Yeah. So the the event will be. Uh, what a bummer! It'll return by grab Thar's hammer. What a bummer! <laughs> there will be no Comic Con, but it makes sense. Yeah, it's coming back uh, July twenty second of twenty twenty one. Woohoo! Woohoo! One um, year and a half away. No. Yay! Um, what is it? April. We're about to be May, June, July. So it's only a year and three months away. Right. And so um, WonderCon, which was similarly postponed, um, and it was supposed to be this coming weekend. It was supposed to be tonight. WonderCon? WonderCon was supposed to start. No, not tonight. April 10th. Uh, I don't know what day it is. Shit, I what, know. what is time? It's month timber. <laughs> yeah. And it's uh, question, question mark day. Um, so wait a second. Is the New York Comic Con? That's in the fall, right? New York Comic Con is October. They haven't canceled yet, have they? They haven't canceled yet. You know, and, and there if is. they fucking cancel, the whole year's been canceled, essentially. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, movie theaters have started talking about, like, limited opening. I saw the president of the United States mentioned that limit, uh, movie theaters would be one of the first things. And I was like, is anybody. Didn't they do that? In China, they opened up the movie theaters mm. and nobody went. Yeah, because that's going to be the thing, is that, you know, A. People are deathly afraid of a second wave, and if you do this too fast, that's precisely what you're going to get. Mm. Um, and B, I think there's just this this sudden distrust of people and germs and gatherings that, like, even if you open the world the way the president wants to, who's going to go? Mm. What if you throw an earth and nobody shows up? I uh, look. I want. I would love to go out as much as the next person, but I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm going to wait until. Yeah, I, I, I got nothing pressing. In a world where they cancel Comic Con, my year's over. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm happy to sit home until I'm told. I'll come I'm here once a week and I'm fine. Go out and play. Yeah. Is, I've been preparing for this my whole life. I'm an introvert. No, but yeah, but I'm Florida, like Florida's reopening their beaches. I think as soon as they can, and it's like, guys, why? I don't know. For the money. I, this is straight out of Jaws. <clears throat> it's all the, this. This whole pandemic has revealed. A lot of Mayor Vaughns out there. <laughs> We're like, Amity is a summer town. We need summer dollars. Yeah. No. I mean, and it's, it's across the board. We're getting to see who the morons are, I think. You say barracuda. People say, oh, huh, what? what? <laughs> you say shark. You got a panic on your hands on the 4th of July. Mm. This is an entire year of 4th of July. Everybody who does that sort of like... Nah, like, did you see the video of the dude in Wisconsin who was completely covered head to toe? He's like, it's completely safe to vote. <laughs> Those people, anyone who's, they should be forced to wear the anchor jacket that Mayor Vaughn <coughs> mm -hmm. in Jaws wore. I like want you to a, hang him up by his Buster Browns. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Comic-Con's not happening, Comic -Con's but I'm not sure happening. a bunch of people, like, I put out a tweet where I was like, come to my house, I'll fucking Comic-Con for you. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of streaming. I'm doing a streaming con very, very soon mm -hmm. uh, online, the name of which escapes me. JC, can you look it up real quick? Virtual con? Is it that what I it's called? Know. It's a virtual con online. It's coming up. I forget. Um, but maybe there'll be, uh, yeah, let's put a fucking camera on JC so he's like <laughs> nervously like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> he's, just, he's typing like he's trying to open Pressure's it. on, motherfucker. He said search. Andrew's he's really hanging you out to dry. Legion M, the Legion M one. I'm not sure if it was that. He's like one of those guys in 24, like Jack Bauer standing over his shoulder. He's trying to open a socket. He's like, I'm trying to do it, sir. The bomb's going to go. I'm trying. You're Max in fucking Homeland. Have you been watching Homeland? I haven't watched Homeland since season one. Fuck, dude. Jump on board. It's the last season. Mm -hmm. Great. Is it? It's been really Is great. Is Mandy Patinkin still awesome? I'm all, he's fantastic. Okay. She's great. The whole fucking thing's great. I'm also fucking fully in on uh, Little Fires Everywhere, but that... Girl who played young <laughs> Kerry Washington yeah. is, wasn't on this oh, season episode. Son of a bitch. You got real Kerry Washington, which was fun too, but <laughs> that's worth a watch. Um, all right, man. What, do we know what it's called? Did you figure it, it out? Is it the Virtual Pop Expo, May 9th and 10th? Maybe. Is that what it is? We're doing a May the 4th. Are you doing is like the one day, 24 hour virtual con? Ooh. Did you hear that shit? Which right I guess here. We just announced. Here at the. You just did. Yeah. So give him another stuff. camera, announce, take your mask down and announce that. We're going to do a, because May the 4th, obviously, is a big nerd holiday. We're going to do a 24-hour stream. Uh, I think you guys are going to do a little Empire Strikes Back commentary. Hell yes. Uh, I got Cut to us. Hell yes. <laughs> Cut back to Jay-Z. 
Uh, the Black Man Beyond uh, guest host, Todd Stashwick, and I are going to do A New Hope earlier in the day. Oh, Ooh. shit. We'll do a live commentary on that. We've and you'll, got, you'll have lots to say, because you were on set when they made that movie. Is that correct? A New Hope? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's awesome. So it's a live streaming May the 4th event on what? The Scum and Villainy channel? On the Scum and Villainy channel. We've got some other stuff that I probably can't announce yet from some really big uh, collectible retailers who are going to reveal some products. And um, hopefully we're going to do some uh, stuff with the Clone Wars actors. Uh, a lot of really good Star Wars content. And I, I'm hoping that we can open the bar for drive-up blue milk service. Oh, how awesome would that be? You pull up, fucking they give you the blue milk, you fuck off. On, right on Hollywood Boulevard? Right on Hollywood. We're going to have... Let me tell you something. There's no fucking traffic. <laughs> like any other time, I'd be like, you're fucking nuts. But now I'm like, it's oh my empty. God, let's open up our yeah. house on fucking We're gonna Hollywood. We're going to land a plane on yeah. Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> a plane. It's Harrison Ford <laughs> landing on Hollywood Boulevard. That's such a good idea, man. Drive up blue milk if possible. $11.38. You'll get blue milk. Why eleven thirty-eight? dollars For George Lucas's. THX1138. So you get some, some milk, so some scum and villainy swag, just like a little Happy Meal type. May the fourth. Everybody's uh, doing it. Uh, that's boxes. awesome. That's fantastic. Good for you. And that is uh, for May the fourth. May the fourth. Keep an eye out, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Uh, meanwhile, what is our tote board up to? Fourteen eighty-five. Eighty-five. Nice. All Fifteen right. bucks away from. Uh, Fifteen hundred. What do we got to do to get to fifteen hundred? You want them to put it on the put them on the glass? We'll both put them on the glass. Bring us a spit guard. <laughs> I'm we'll lactating. What other news we got? Now Comic Con is not happening. So Comic Con is not happening. Guess what, kids? For the first time in your privileged little t-ball lives, you're not going to get to do what you want to do in July. <laughs> um, yeah, that sucks. That's yeah, how I feel. I it feel does. like but I, my you shit's know, been put off. They're rolling over. We had exclusive pops that we were releasing at Comic Con. Did you? Mark. Yes. So. When In my said, first world, everything's falling <laughs> apart. <laughs> <laughs> my figures don't come out. <laughs> um, man, that's a bummer. Uh, but we're living in history, kids. We are. If you've ever been one of those assholes, it's like, man, nothing ever happened in my lifetime. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to your Burgess Meredith moment. <laughs> Um, I, I would like less things to happen in my life. Yeah, than, though, nothing else. <laughs> for the, I'll <laughs> yeah. take a, a slow, easy ride right I, to the grave, please. I'm full up. Yeah, too many things have happened in my lifetime. Yeah. What? Uh, let's move on to greener pastures. Uh, since we're not, hey, we passed over. We, we did went it. to 1595. They want to see you put them on the glass. Oh shit! We like a hundred bucks just in a clip. Um, what? Uh, we, we can't talk about uh, Comic Con anymore because it's so sad, but it understandable. And sometimes sad. Things have to be understood, kids. You have to understand them. That's part of being a, an adult. Sometimes stuff. bad things happen to good people. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. So, oh. Hey, guys. Donnie Cates just donated 100 bucks. Hey, that that was him. For the shout out. Fucking A, man. Well good done, for you, Donnie. Donnie Cates. He wants you to put him on the glass. Put him right up. Um, I took a page out of, if you came in late to the show, out of Donnie Cates' book. He paid for all the folks in Austin at the comic book sh uh, store he goes to for their reserve books for this month and stuff. And he said, hey, just use the money in the store to buy cool things that you mm -hmm. would have not bought for yourself before. I said, what a cool idea. So I called Mike Zapsick at the Secret Stash in Jersey. I said, empty the reserve box, send it out. So Mike's now sending all the reservist books out to those cats and stuff. See, man, you see somebody has a good idea, you fucking steal it. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you steal it and you, you milk it make and you it your drink own its blood. Itself. Um, what other news do we have? Uh, I think we, we, we might have flirted with this before, but HBO Max just ordered three television programs from J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot. This news was so fucking exciting to me. Put a pin in it real quick. Yes. What did I want, J.C.? Oh, before we go further, give yourself a single. What happened on Clone Wars? Oh, Big okay. So spoilers, because somebody spoiled this for me. So if you don't want to know. but they Cover your ears. One, two... Three, here come the spoilers. They started the new episode of Clone Wars with a uh, black screen with the neon green old school Lucasfilm Limited production logo. Like was on the Star Wars movies we grew yeah, up with. Yeah, yeah, the ones we before saw. Before they here. changed it for the special edition and immediately just told you like, 
oh, this is gonna this is gonna kick you in the gut. This is a little time machine. Are they doing the siege at Mandalore? Or? Siege of Mandalore. That's the storyline. This episode, which ties in oddly to this episode, Mandalore references also. It ties into the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. Really? So this story that you will watch on Clone Wars this week happens concurrently with the opening of Revenge of the Sith. Huh. Really? So they're saying Ahsoka was around? They, but wait, Revenge of the Sith, isn't that where they do Order 66? Order 66. So at the beginning of this, at the beginning of this episode, they're like, you know, the Jedi are spread out, and you see each of the Jedi that die arriving on the planet that they will be executed on. Are you shitting on. me? Yeah, it's amazing. That's Dave Filoni? That's Filoni. Fuck, man. Don't you love it when people do their job well? That is some deep science. Right That's there. fucking cool, man. That's cool to hear. Um, all right, so I'm going to go watch that when I get home. All right, back to this fucking exciting yes. news, because... Yes, the Justice League dark shit is fantastic, and we mm. talked to Jim about it earlier. If you're jumping in now, Jim Lee was on earlier, and we talked about Justice League dark. The one I want to talk about, yes, the one that I think is fucking brilliant, and I'm like, how the fuck did nobody do this before? Yes. Is Overlook Hotel. Mm -hmm. That is fucking brilliant. They're doing a show called Overlook Hotel, which is essentially... Fucking, what, a series of, like, this bad thing happened, this bad thing happened. Nothing about, you know, The Shining, but right. just all the horrible shit that happened in the yeah. fucking hotel. Is it, that what I'm, am I right? It, it, uh, according to the, the sort of press release, it explores the untold terrifying stories of the most famous haunted hotel in American fiction. This is a great idea. I, I know I said that about Dr. Sleep. I'm going to say it about this. <laughs> this is a great idea. It's like, it lends itself to an anthology. This is very smart coming mm. from the guy that did Castle Rock. Yes, Dusty Thomason, who was my boss on Castle Rock, mm. along with Scott Brown, who uh, was my assistant at Entertainment Weekly. 100%. I fucking <laughs> love this idea. 100%. Oh, I, th I know that dude's name from Entertainment Weekly. Yeah, he was my assistant. I told that story. Yeah. Um, but he, is, he was the co-EP on the second season of, of Castle Rock. Right. And so now he and Dusty are staying in the Stephen King zone and uh, checking into the Such Overlook. Such a good idea. Yeah, no, very excited for them. Um, I, I think that's, I, I remember when we first heard of Castle Rock, we were all like, holy shit, it's going to be every fucking Stephen King is the Avengers Endgame of Stephen mm. King characters. And that clearly wasn't the case. Uh, but it was more inspired by, became mm. its own thing that won awards, if I'm yeah. fucking correct. Uh, this, though has the chance to just be like, I just want, just give me a different fucking horror story every week. What's don't I want, door? don't give me any fucking mythology. Don't fucking like, I work here. Fuck you. I just want to, I mean, there could be some people working there, but I, mean, I just want to see week after week. Here's a fuck. It could be Black Mirror, bitch. Mm -hmm. That fucking show could be Black Mirror with a Stephen King fucking pedigree. Oh, I'm so excited. Like, don't you want to hear Grady's story? The, yes! The bartender who clearly killed a bunch of fucking people at some well, point. Well, Grady, he was the caretaker. I would like to oh, hear the story the of Lloyd, your ghostly bartender. He yes. was the boy to tear the dog that bit me, Lloyd. Mm. Tear the dog. There's so, and I'm, that's just like, like if you're doing what, 10 episodes? Mm. You save those two fuckers for like the yeah. end, man. But like, you could just go whole hog. Crazy. It's such a good idea. Who gets to play young Scatman Carruthers? Do, that's right. Dick O'Halloran is a yes. cook there. He got the shine. That's right, man. Fuck. Um, got each old million want to be regular. Well, we saw somebody play us Scatman Carruthers in Dr. Sleep. Oh, yeah? I, didn't, I never saw Dr. Sleep. Carl Lumley? I think Carl it was, Lumley. I think it was Ooh, our guy. Mantis. Yeah. And <laughs> no. Well... <laughs> <laughs> the <OG>. guts pull. <laughs> um, also, the Martian Manhunter yes. for so very long, um, and on Supergirl, the Martian Manhunter's dad. Mm -hmm. This is a good idea. What's the third show? Uh, the third show is a show called Duster, um, which was co-written by JJ himself, who doesn't do a ton of what? Yeah, he doesn't do that. Very he doesn't well. do a ton of that. And Latoya Morgan, who was one of my co-hosts on a on a Black Man Beyond. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Did you know she was getting a show? Uh, I knew that she, she was like developing a thing but as is the bad robot way everything is a secret until it's everything's a fucking mystery box isn't yeah it? jeezy crazy but uh, apparently it it's set in the 1970 southwest uh revolves around the life of a gutsy getaway driver for a growing crime syndicate what year uh 1970s i i was born then yes I was were born you, in 70, so this is you, of interest to me. So were you that man? <laughs> yeah. Were, were I, you well, that child getaway That's driver? how I like entertainment that's set in the past or period shit, because I'm like, oh, I'm, 
I was I was alive for that. I was, I was there for that. Like I think uh, what was it in uh, Infinity War when they go to New Jersey in 1970? <laughs> I was like I was alive. Like these shit. Yeah. This is history now. I know where that was. <laughs> um, all right. So three wonderful shows. JJ off and running at with his Warner Brothers deal yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Many more of that of those things to come. And as happy as I am about Justice League Dark, I think fucking overlook the moment I saw that in print. And this, I ain't trying, I'm not like, hire me, not at all. I, I look forward to watching the fuck out of that. It's just such a good idea. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh, Please I... be the show I want it to be. <laughs> Please, just make it an anthology. Don't, don't, is Castle Rock, they were all connected, right? There's a story? Yes. Don't, don't do that. that. <laughs> you don't want that. Just make it just every week. It's a one-off like Black Mirror. And it's just, you know, Overlook. That's smart money right there. But then again, I am the man that made yoga hosers. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will do my best to convey that to the gents. I was, I was telling the public as if they were going to help. That's right. <laughs> Mark, tell that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I will text them tonight. Hey, this is the show Kev wants. Cool? <laughs> I, I remember, like, I thought, like, a lot of people, like, Castle Rock was going to be like, oh, and then fucking Cujo's going to show up. He's going to jump out of carry and fucking, not <laughs> carry. Take a <laughs> shit and fucking Christine. Things if now. Cujo jumped out of carry, that's a fucking show everyone would want to see. yes. He would jump out of Christine. <laughs> like, remember the commercial for that one movie? I think it was Stephen King, Cat's Eye. Yes. And it was, a, everything was a little reference to a Stephen King movie. Mm -hmm. So there was, like, the cat almost got hit by the Christine car. Um, there was another reference. Yeah, I, I think that was like the opening credits of the movie. Even. And they wound up using that. That's yeah. right. Oh, my God. Self-referential. Um, all right. So what yeah. else we got? We got one last bit. Um, it's a, related to Star Wars. Rogue One. Star Wars. Star Wars. What is this? Um, <laughs> explain to me this war yeah. of the stars. This is sounds about. new. Sounds uh, hip. So is um, this a TikTok thing? <laughs> what are you talking it's on, about? It's, it's on the Quibbies. <laughs> this is a Quibby show? <laughs> the Star Wars? I don't get the Quibbies on Can my I phone. Can I watch it both ways with my phone? <laughs> Did you see Ryan Johnson put up a tweet of he was holding uh, the, the match from Lawrence of Arabia? And, uh, but it's, it's like portrait size. It's like, oh man, this quibby version of Lords of Arabia <laughs> is the shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. It's like the most famous shot in history. <laughs> Cut of all of its residents. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I found in the age of the pandemic and coronavirus age, I'm not nearly as clever as I think. Because I watch a lot of TikToks where I'm like, you should pay this person a lot of money. <laughs> this is very clever. <laughs> or touching. Did you see the one about the guy? The vet, veterinarian. No. And he's got a blind dog who's also deaf. What? So, like, you can't wake the, like, if you, like. Oh, I did see that the one. The dog, if you wake it up, the dog's like, ah! Because yeah, he fucking, blows in his face. He blows in his fucker's face. I'm like, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Fuck everything else. I'm just going to watch TikTok videos and shit. <laughs> oh, he blowing in that dog's face. That's, I'd rather watch that than someone getting blown in a porn, Mark. <laughs> And that's Married the highest, by Tom Carvel. Highest praise, yeah. <laughs> unless Tom Carvel was like, all right, and now she's grabbing his shaft. <laughs> Cradle the balls. Work the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so back to Star Wars. Back to Star Wars. Um, Disney Plus has already announced that they're doing a Rogue One show. which is Yeah, based with, on, um, what's his name? Um, Cassian Andor. What's his, yeah, Diego his Luna. name. Cassian Andor. Yeah, so it's the sort of the story of Cassian, him. Who we all know dies. Yes. Um, we see it happen. Um, but it's the prequel story. It's his sort of journey through the resistance. Where he's like, boy, I hope I never die. You know what? Don't ever take me to the beach. Bad things happen to me at the beach. <laughs> uh, so wait, have they gotten closer on that show? Uh, they just cast uh, Stellan Skarsgård. Oh, he's, um, a, he's a great actor. For the series. Um, and, uh, he was yeah, in Good Will Hunting. He's in Good Will Hunting. As well as, of course, all the Marvel movies. Um, and the pilot will be written by Tony Gilroy. Oh, he's yes, good. Yes, he's very he's, he's, <laughs> Oh, he's, he's quite good. good. He's very good writer. Um, yeah, but he uh, he co-wrote and did some last. He was the one that came in and yeah, and made did some, Rogue One and did the sort of patchwork. What everyone um, knows Rogue One to be. Yeah, at this point. Um, but yeah, so the, according wow, to and he's a self-confessed like I don't know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really don't care for this. Yes, he's like the, the Werner Herzog of behind the camera. Yeah, he's kinda. Like, I don't know very much about this Star Wars, but that should be a fucking puppet. But he's talent, and you know, that's what you want, man. And also, there's some continuity of service between the movie and the actual. Yeah, serious. So that's cool, man. Yeah, but so, hey, man, like I'm all for it. Bring it on. But when do we get more Mando? I want. I think it's like August, right? I want a mainline Mandalorian into my fucking veins. I haven't had a good time watching something. I haven't had as good a time watching something over a period of fucking episodes 
and I can't remember how far, maybe Watchmen. Mm. You know what? What am I bitching about? I just had Watchmen <laughs> a few months ago. I'm acting like I'm starving and shit. There's yeah. a lot of good programs. But also, Watchmen feels like it was 48 years ago. Oh, you ain't kidding. <laughs> since Watchmen, since lo, those many months ago. And we didn't even know when Watchmen was happening and that the world would fucking turn into what it turned yep. into. Yup. That's crazy. Um, but God, yeah, she so, got real for a second in it, our it conversation. Really <laughs> like, remember no, the talk, Watchmen when we had like, so much hope? Wow. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, so that's fucking production. Dr. Manhattan should have given us all one of them eggs. Yes, please. We yeah. all make some omelets. Yeah. But instead of standing online for an hour to get an egg. Yeah. Now, new version of Watchmen. He'd give her an egg, but she'd be wearing a mask. Like she already was. <laughs> <laughs> Proving Damon Lindelof once again was ahead of the fucking curve. Man. Yes. And also, maybe he started the he pandemic. He deserves all the now. awards. When do, they, when do they fucking go like, and the winner for fucking the Emmys? Ma- uh, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. When, when do for they... <laughs> translating. <laughs> you mean the Emmys? That's a lot of words for the Emmys. Oh, uh, yes. Like award season. When, <laughs> when can Watchmen... When, will, it hasn't passed, right? No. No. Because uh, I don't... Like, I'll try to vote for that. That was that how good it is. Speaking of awards, in a year that COVID cancels movie theaters after March... Yeah. Does Sonic the Hedgehog or Birds of Prey win Best Picture this year? Oh, oh, I mean, JC just took it to a. It's actually really interesting. Real place because according to the Academy's rules, you need to play in a theater in either New York and LA for at least a week yeah. to be eligible for an Oscar. And there are movies that are not going to get that exposure because there's not going to be theaters to show it in. Josh Trank, one time. Uh, Guest. Was he on Fat Man and Batman? Yeah, I think it was because uh, of I the wasn't there. Fantastic. Well, not with it, might have been the earlier version of the show, but I sp- or maybe he was on Spawncast. But Josh Trank, who directed Fantastic mm-hmm. Four, he directed a, a um, uh, Al Capone movie with mm-hmm. Tom Hardy mm-hmm. uh, um, called Fonzo that is now coming out as Capone um, on streaming. Mm-hmm. So in that case, because Josh is saying, like, it's coming out streaming now, but there'll be some theatrical later on. If that's the case, will Tom Hardy not be eligible for playing Capone because the movie be. didn't play in some fucking movie theater? Do you think mm-hmm. the Academy has to relax that this year? I'm sure it's a conversation they're going to have to have. I'm having it right now. Give me a, <laughs> give me relax a, that give me a fucking... Give, give me a solo. Hey, MPAA, relax. <laughs> Loosen your sphincter. Yeah, just relax. Um, yeah, it would seem like in a world where a lot of movies are, like, hey, man, fucking Trolls World Tour went straight to streaming. Yeah. You mean to tell me they're not going to be eligible for an Oscar? Anna Kendrick's not going to get a fucking Oscar nomination? I don't want to live in a world where yeah. fucking Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick don't get nods for, are they still the voices in that troll movie? <laughs> they I, were in I, the first one. I, I am not sure. Um, I don't know if that if it needs to premiere in a theater or it needs to play in a theater because there's Eventually. also the world in which yeah it premieres in on streaming and then there's a mad fucking rush for one screen in before New York the end LA. of the year before the like, end of the, yeah wow we did my week I did my week and you have we to, made six hundred dollars we made Kev Smith money yeah. and more than that it has to have been reviewed by either the New York Times or the L A Times that's an MPAA thing that's an MPAA rule which is insane. It's a little uptight. It's a little antiquated. Really, yeah, that's the term. It's more antiquated than anything else. It leaves yeah. a lot of people out of the mix. It really it's does. Exclusionary. Yeah. I mean, something should be done. <laughs> Now's the time um, when you have all of this time. Yeah, really. Change your rules. It gotta lighten up, yeah. man. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. He ain't gonna win the Oscar for that, but Mark will win the Oscar for, for worst attendance. <laughs> What was the movie? <laughs> that was uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm X, but what did he win for? Uh, training Day. Training Day. Mark will win the Oscar for Training Day. More to make up for the fact that he didn't win his Oscar for that I will. Malcolm my X performance. Sh- my <laughs> shitty ten self from Training Day. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. It's better. Here we go. <laughs> you got to do the Denzel finger. There's always the Denzel finger. How, f- how fucking famous do you think like Denzel will be for the rest of his life, and even when he passes, because whenever any name shows up on Twitter, <laughs> like if somebody's like, Betty White is trending, the first five pictures at the top are always that clip of him. <laughs> oof, oof. 
That's yeah. fucking famous, dude. It like is. when he's the immediate that shot is still the go-to to express, oh thank God. It's, yeah, because it's like panic and then is this and then and then a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he knows? I mean he must. It's gotta make him happy. Except that it's for uh, it's if I remember correctly, that's from the movie Fallen. Is that where it's from? <laughs> yeah, which is like not a great Denzel movie. <laughs> I mean, but that moment saved it. That moment has been viewed by more people probably mm. than every movie Denzel ever did put together. Now, at some point, somebody's going to monetize that shit. Like, how many gift views do you have? You ain't fucking kidding. Oh, my God. What, what, so is smart. there a company we can start that'll do that? It's so true. It's bound to happen. <laughs> um, well, do shit. not ever in your entire life think that you could get one over on me. Which one was that? I don't even remember. I just think that's every Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> With the finger? With the finger. Um, <laughs> all right. No more news? That's it, man. He gave you the news. What we more did our best. News, news is in short supply. Can Looks anybody like think of any paper. other news? Uh, no, that was it, right? Nothing else happened this week? Not too much. Oh, there's a picture online oh. of Wonder Woman that got out in Empire Magazine mm -hmm. of her, you know, fucking whoop, throwing the lasso around... Uh, cheetah's arms. It's Kristen Wiig as Cheetah, mm -hmm. but she ain't cheated out. It's like she's wearing like Cheetah clothing, but she looks like, if I had to guess, I don't fucking know anything, but it's early stage. Like if, let's say she'd taken some potion or whatever, because mm -hmm. we've seen um, either Funko Pops or Lego figures for Wonder Woman toys that depict a humanoid Cheetah. Mm -hmm. So Kristen Wiig, it looks like based on the toys, is going to have feline features like Cheetah in the comics. So in this one, in this picture, she's not there yet. She looks like Kristen Wiig, but she's wearing like Cheetah print clothing. Mm -hmm. And she's got her arm like this and the lassos around it and Wonder Woman is across the room pulling. Mm -hmm. So it looks like she got some strength. There's also a picture of her with the lasso around uh, Maxwell Lord, played mm -hmm. by Mandalorian star. What's his name? Um, oh. Fuck. Fuck. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. There it man. is. He was in Narcos. He, he was. was so good in Narcos. He's, I, so, uh, he's good in The Mandalorian, but like, what a great job. If Keep we, your mask on the whole time. <laughs> One shot. You're like, look at my fucking face. And then when he takes his mask off, you're like, should have showed his face every fucking episode. <laughs> it's beautiful. But it's a genius idea, right? We're like, you can't take that fucking helmet off because then Pedro Pascal don't have to be there every fucking day. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> it. What a dream job. They're like, we need you for the last episode just to take the mask off. The rest of it's voice work. It's like <laughs> done and done. If, uh, if we are down to the describing pictures we saw on the internet section of the show, did you see the Dune shots from Vanity Fair? Let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> let's, let's, let's we almost left it. here without talking about it. The first image they released was Timothy Chalamet as yes. Paul Atreides mm -hmm. on the desert planet Arrakis, it looked like. No, no it was Caladan. So he's before he goes to Arrakis. That's right, because he he's not wearing a still he's suit. not wearing a still suit. Just and him his, wearing like his outfit. And, shit and, and his, the, so the picture of him and Jessica, his sister, was she, was that on Arrakis? His mother. What, well, Lady they had a Jessica. picture. Well, isn't the, what's the kid's name, the little girl's name? Um, his sister, the one who's Alia. like, I, 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 my brother rides the storm, Dad. <laughs> she was so terrifying. Who's the actress who played her? She's like a legit actress. Oh, fuck. She's going to hate me because I know her. But they fucking looped her voice. Um, yes. Yes. Fuck. Why can't I remember her name? It'll come to you. It's, but it's, it's awful. I feel bad. Um, yeah, God damn it. Let's get some help. Pull up Dune. See yeah. who played... Yes, 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 <laughs> who played Alia. Um, that's his little sister. Yeah. And she becomes a Benny Jesuit witch. She does. Like, very, because, la at least so according lady, to the movie. The lady of him, the, so the picture of Timothy Chalamet in a still suit. And he's standing next to a, a he's girl. He's standing next to Chani. Zendaya. No, I didn't see it. I, I saw a separate picture of Chani by herself. But I saw a picture of Paul in a still suit si standing next to there's a, a there's girl. A, and you're saying that's his mom? Who's playing his mom? Um, Rebecca Ferguson. You might be right. It might have been her. She looks fucking young. Yeah. Well, I think she always was. I mean, I, th I, just, I thought it was his younger sister, but you're right now that I think about it and shit. Yeah. Um, she's a good actor. She was in Dr. Sleep. Yes. She, she was, was definitely in the, the last couple of Mission One of my Impossible. favorite parts of Dr. Sleep. Um, wow. Alicia Witt. There it is. Well done from Fun, Fuck, the movie yes. Fun. And she was on Walking Dead and mm -hmm. she was on the Sybil show. And she's yes. on I'm sorry, Alicia. That makes me feel bad. Um, I forgot your name. 
So wait a second. Uh, I saw that picture. The picture of fucking Duke Leto Atreides looking up doing this Oscar shit. Oscar Isaac with the fucking giant beard. Did you see, what was that dude? Is it Boss Logic who does yeah. the posters? And he took that shot and he turned him into... I saw uh, Deathstroke. Deathstroke. Because he was like, he's the perfect dude. <laughs> so he put a patch on him and changed his outfit colors. Um, it looks fantastic. We're big Denis Villeneuve fans hmm. here, man. He's fu- I love fucking Arrival. I, fuck it. I love whatever he does. He's, he's the fucking truth. So him doing this, I'm on board already. But Mark is a Dune reader. I'm a, yes. You're I, a Herbert guy. Because I saw the movie, the, the David Lynch movie. I must have been like 14 years old. And like my dad had brought it home on VHS. He rented it from our mom and pop video store. And, uh, and I watched it, and I had no fucking idea what was going on. <laughs> you're like, this is confusing. This is, I don't understand any Even of this. as a child, you were like, I'm pretty sure the studio took this away from the director. <laughs> <laughs> like, this doesn't seem like it's got a singular vision at work. Um, <laughs> and then I rewatched it immediately, because it was, for some reason, the kind of movie that I, I didn't understand, but wanted to understand. Mm. And still didn't on the back end of it. But it was like, oh, wait, there are books? F- let me read these fucking books. And, and the first couple of books... Um, it's Dune and Dune Messiah, I think, or it's Dune and Dune God Children of Earth. Um, but they're amazing. They're wonderful. There's these like these '60s, written in the '60s, but it's all about kind of ecology and the Superman and and you know hermetically sealed environments and rebels. Lucas and power. Lucas cribbed some stuff, right? Yeah, I mean the I think in Star Wars in A New Hope. There are scenes when, when R2 and, and C3PO are going through the desert and you see the giant skeleton. The skeleton. is basically supposed to be a sandworm. It's supposed to be a, a shy halud. That's crazy, really? Yeah. So he's like, I, I acknowledge the fact that I was a big Dune reader. <laughs> I read things too. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I can't wait. Man. Oh, but man. the performances in Dune are so arch. It's not quite like Mommy Dearest, but like fucking... They're big. They're very big and they're fun because of it. Yeah, and Pull out a- your hand, young human. <laughs> Let us see. There is a place terrifying <laughs> to us. <laughs> I will kill him! <laughs> All I see is an Atreides I want to kill. Who is this one? A pet, perhaps? Remember fucking, what's his name? Um, God, what's his actor? The actor's name, is it Bruce? Some, the guy. Bruce McGill? No, the, the one who's like, go be secret. <laughs> Make sure you're not seen. The hand gestures. Yeah. He was in, uh, he's oh, a shit. David Lynch regular, yeah. but he was in X Files. He was the guy that was in jail who was uh, that um, one episode. Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif, excellent call. And he was yes. also in fucking. Uh, he was in One Flew Legion. of the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, that's right. He's the young guy who stutters, yeah. Billy. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Remember him in by that the episode? Juice of Sabu, my thoughts fu- acquire speed. The lips acquire stain. By my will alone do I set my mind in motion. And he drinks that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Um, remember him in the episode of the X-Files when Scully's dad dies in the beginning mm. and then they go to see him cause he can, he know he's visions and shit, but he's on death row for killing people and shit. He was so fucking good in that show. Yeah. He's a great actor. A wonderful actor. Um, all and right. Stellan Skarsgård is playing Baron Harkonnen. Stellan Skarsgård is playing the giant Baron, the big, your skin. The is guy like, who is the, uh, the one who is like. I just want to spit in your face. Just a little spittle. <laughs> yes, with a very bad skin condition. Um, I read that that character's rendering is going to be far more grotesque mm. than even that one. And I thought fucking... They did an all right job. I really thought Lynch made him fucked up and creepy and shit, yeah. but it sounds like they're going to do even more so. And we'll have to get... Do you think the third stage navigators will still look like giant testicles with vagina mouths? I hope so. Because <laughs> was a very confusing character for a young man going like, there's Wait. balls and a vagina. What is huh. turning me on more? I'll just jerk off to it all. <laughs> this is a David Lynch jam jam. <laughs> so uh, hot. Frank Herbert, so hot. We I'm not even to... left-handed. What am I talking yeah. about? Well, you know. Sometimes you're the stranger. <laughs> 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 sit on your left hand instead of your right. Uh, <laughs> And um, our, so, our yes. man, David DeSmolchin. You saw him? No, but he's in the movie. Oh, I thought you said you ran into him. No. I was like, during the fucking epidemic? Um, <laughs> wait, he's in the movie? He's Who's he Dune. playing? I'm not sure. He might be playing the Brad Dorf role, man. He might be. He might be. Peter DeVries, I think the character's name Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he might be. And that would be amazing. I'm excited, man. I, I love Del- Denis Villeneuve, and I think he's visionary. It looks like they're spending enough. Fuck ton of money. Yeah. Looks expensive. I mean, fucking Khal Drogo is in it. 
Momoa playing Duncan Idaho. Who's not even, if I remember correctly, a big character in most of no. it. No. He's out after a certain point. Yeah. And so, is, I mean, spoilers, like, but this movie's been around for a while, as is the book. Duke Leto's out pretty fucking quick, too. Yeah. No wonder out. Oscar Isaac's like, yeah, I'll do it. What do you need me for, 10 <laughs> minutes? I'm in. And, uh, and fucking Thanos. Thanos. He's in it, too. He plays he Gurney. Gurney. Gurney Halleck. I'm in, man. When is this movie ready? Can we see it tomorrow? Uh, we cannot, uh, nor could we even if it was ready tomorrow. Why not? Um, they, are, they are committed to a big screen. Um, they have to. Block. They're spending so much money. They can't, yeah. put, and it's they can't be too. like, hey, we see it for, you know, debut on HBO Max. <laughs> yeah. They're going to fucking put that in a the movie. Yeah, it's theater. December, I think, is the, the release date. So hopefully um, by And then. think about it. Think about how sweet that is. We will have been locked up forever. You won't have seen... Any fucking movies. Can they run the Oscars this year? Mm. Even if, like, we come out, if movies open, uh, movie theaters open up in June, July? Is that, you what know, kind of short ass year is that gonna be? It's gonna be a, a super short. It's always the same. Because he could, if it, would this come out? No, this is December. This December? Yeah. That's why we're seeing pictures. Mm -hmm. There's no way this movie don't make, like, all the fucking award nominations and shit. Same with What's His Fuck with Tenet, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. Chris Nolan's yeah. movie. If that's still out this summer. You don't know if it's coming out this summer? I mean, it's, it was July. Before. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you hear? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me some shit, man. <laughs> um, it, was, it was previously set for July, and I don't think that anybody's going to open a movie that expensive in July. So they're probably going to wait. So Where did they move Wonder Woman to? Um, I want to say they moved it to like December, October, or December, November, like in that. So they got the fuck out of the summer. They're like, yeah. Black yeah. Widow, that got moved to like November. I think, yeah. I can't, Disney reslated a bunch of shit, and I don't remember exactly what. But they, they shifted everything back like six months. Um, the tote board, kids, is, seems I'm going to have to go over and hit it. It's stuck. Mm, 1835? At 1835, man. So uh, if you want to do some Q&A, let's horse trade. <laughs> let's horse trade, ladies and gentlemen. a question. If we get up to uh, 2,000 in the next, uh, let's say... <laughs> Three hours. Two minutes... <laughs> <laughs> At this rate. Uh, two minutes, if we get to the 2,000 mark, we'll do Q&A. And if not, we'll wrap up and, and say goodnight and stuff yeah. like that. So Basically, you got to want it. Open, yeah, you got That's right. You got Like everything in life, you got to pay for it, man. And we'll answer. You, you can uh, cue us, and we'll A the fuck out of you if we see the tote board hit 2,000 Jeez. in two minutes. I can tell a bunch of you out there. Not even hovering fingers over the button right now. Like, let's watch it fail. This is going to crash and burn. <laughs> show's going to end. He's not going to do a Q&A, is he? I don't know. We'll find out together. Pretty so much. far, no. no tips whatsoever. <laughs> Call Remember, to action went unheard. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, this ain't for us. This is for Bink. What is Bink? <laughs> I keep asking. You don't know. Bink is a charity. What, where can they go? Yeah, BinkFoundation.org and donate there, and they're helping to facilitate relief to independent bookstores, of which comic book uh, owners fall into that category. That's right. So what the fuck are you waiting for? Be a Binky. Give us some money so we can hand it over to Bink. Don't be a stinky. Be a Binky. Fair. Fucking, you should have come up with that two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of hook, that would have made us some money. It took some iteration. We need to get um, checking the tote board, I see that it's still stagnant at 1835. It Either isn't. nobody's watching or nobody's taking me did, seriously. Did we lose everybody? Like everyone signed off. Is there another better stream going? <laughs> is, is Tom Hanks and the Wonders performing someplace? I, I know Muse is on Twitch right now. And there have been people bouncing back and forth. Give me my fucking two shots. <laughs> you piece of shit. Stealing from the good people at... at oh, 1945. Hold Bink. on. Oh. Just jumped by 100 bucks again. Look at that shit. That's got to be uh, Donny Cates right there. He wants you to put him on the glass. That's next. Um, 19... 2020, we're wow. doing we're doing Q and A, ladies Q &A. and gentlemen. Well, well done. Pipe some cues into the feed. We'll a the fuck out of those. Yeah, cues. man, you want to hit us with some cues? JC's here looking at where's the best place they could cue us. Uh, YouTube live chat is the best place right now, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube live chat. If you put up a question in there, uh, JC here is going to feed it to us, and we're going to respond, man, because you did exactly what we asked you to do. How sweet we well, are. Uh, less than 500, about 400 and change away from our uh, stated goal for the evening, which is really, really sweet. Thank you for everybody who 
was able to throw a few uh, bucks out there and yeah. stuff. We didn't mean to cause. shame you. We just needed to, to incentivize you. Yeah, we're not shaming you at all and stuff. Um, all right, do we have questions? Yeah, we've got questions. Uh, yeah. These guys put it in last week and this week, uh, and I liked them. Uh, what are their names? Give them their this names. This guy is Xavier Kampon. Xavier Roberts, creator of fucking Cabbage Patch Kids. Get him on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he says, something how is, how are things in baby land general? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's deep cuts joke. If you've, if you've ever been to Georgia, you can actually go to where the cabbage, but anyway, back to JC. Uh, Xavier says something that I don't think Spider-Man far from home touched on enough due to uh, be, he's from overseas it is, or no, the movie takes place overseas is the five year time gap. Can you both come up with a story? within that five years, and he suggests Miles Morales. Oh, my God! Then why does he want anything from us? Seriously, that's, that's pretty great. That's a great fucking answer. Because that cat should be running shit. Whatever story that we would come up with can't involve Spider-Man because he's gone. Unless it's a new Spider-Man, in which case, Miles Morales, thanks, man, you answered our question. The only guy you could have that, that jumped to my mind was the Asian kid who got older, you know, because he didn't get zapped away. No, no, he got zapped away. The other guy who was like, now I want to have, yeah, I'm going to have sex with fucking Mary Jane. And he was like, what? <laughs> Dexter St. Jock. But that, he was one. a beautiful man. But he went from being a little kid to being right. a grown-up. That's like everyone else they saw got blipped away. Right. It's, it, the, but the, that is a great story. See, there's a creative. There's somebody who's fucking hungry. Me and this old fool... We wouldn't have come up with that. We would have been fumbling around for some bullshit. Miles yeah. is a great idea. Totally. I mean, it's, it's a little bit uh, disingenuous to ask a question you already have a great answer for. But, uh, I know, but if you basically wanted to be like, well, I'm going to show these fucking dicks up, <laughs> you just did it. Yep. In you, a big, bad way. It took a, two weeks <laughs> to come up with a great answer. We told people, give us more money and we'll answer questions, and I can't even answer that. It's so good. It's no. a great response. Well done. Um, all right, ask us something else. She had something this, answerable. This is E.B. Madsen says, uh, if you had to recast the DCU movies with actors who are in the MCU, who would you cast? And then that's for Kevin. And then he wants to know who Mark would th do the flip. So who from the MCU would you recast in the DCU? All right, so what am I doing? So who, if you had to take... The DC Universe movies and put Marvel actors in them. Like who? What Marvel actor would play Superman? What Marvel actor would play Batman? Oh. And then Mark, they want you to do the the flip of it. So what DC actor would I use to play? Would you, would you put in the basically what uh, Justice League would you make Avengers? And then what Avengers would you make Justice League? Um. <laughs> Can I go? I'm gonna, I'll give you time to think, but I will take your category. I'd rather do DC to Marvel. DC actors into Marvel movies? Yeah. Okay, you can have it. DC to Marvel. First one, Jason Momoa plays Kraven the Hunter. Hands down. Uh, and that's all I had. No. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm going to drop the mic. because. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, who are the other DC actors? Ben Affleck is playing... Mm, you know, honestly, this is gonna. Well, what well, is this? Some world, some alternate reality? Like, I'm not gonna offend anybody by being like this person's fired and this person's hired. This is just a world where Robert Downey Jr. never played Iron Man, right? Correct. Ben Affleck could totally be fucking Iron Man. Totally charming as fuck. The only, as I always felt like, the only problem with casting him as Batman was that he is so like fun to watch, so char charismatic. Half of your role is you wearing a mask and you know rah, 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 mm. and stuff like that. He he, I, you know, be a great Bruce Wayne, um, and even you know, but Bruce Wayne to the public, right? Like the Bruce Wayne behind closed doors is essentially kind of Batman. But Affleck as Tony Stark, I could totally see it, particularly because he's mostly if you took the Robert Downey Jr. approach and you just played a version of yourself, a heightened version of yourself. Uh, Affleck, one of the most charismatic, funny fucking people I've ever met. I would totally cast him as Iron Man. Um, let's see. Um, um, all right. Uh, Henry Cavill. Okay. Wolverine. 
I agree Ooh, with the internet. Well, the internet's been saying it's not even an original idea, but the internet was like, he should play Wolverine. I was like, I was, first I was like, no. And then I was like, you know what? He yeah. actually fucking looks pretty good. Yeah, like, why not him? All right, so Henry Cavill plays my Wolverine. Um, let's see, who else we got? Oh, well, Joaquin Phoenix is in a DC movie. He's a pretty good actor. Uh huh. Um, he plays Dr. Doom. Joaquin Phoenix plays Dr. Ooh, Doom. Nice. You know, great actor, mask and shit like that. And he's such a good actor, he's playing it from behind a mask and you're still loving it. Um, let's see. Margot Robbie. I wish I had a pen. <laughs> uh, Black Widow. Or Captain Marvel. Okay, that's cool. I mean, it's kind of easy, right? Because you just, mm -hmm. there's only, I mean, you know, there's more male characters. So I guess it's easier to be like, oh, well, she could play this. Uh, but she's such a good actress, she could play fucking anything. Um, but let's see, who else? I hope you've been doing a lot of thinking. I have, yes. Um, you're ready to steal, as they say I on Family steal. Feud. Get ready to steal. <clears throat> There's my third X. All right. Um, play or pass? Play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pass. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the the no brainer is Chris Evans as Clark Kent slash Superman. Of course. Duh. Blonde Superman? Yeah. Why not? Or freaking dye his hair. He has brown hair. We can do Fair that. Enough. That's true. Um, Robert Downey Jr., mm. uh, Lex Luthor. Oh, you win. I'm <laughs> sorry, did I blow your ears out? You fucking win. That's the answer of the night. Robert Downey Jr. as fucking Lex Luthor. I, I, for the first time in history, I'd root for fucking Lex Luthor. <laughs> oh, excellent casting call. Give me another one. You made uh, me hard. Thank God this desk is here. Outstanding. Uh, Tom Holland as Barry Allen. Oh! My God, that's clever. That's good. Right. Well, wait, was I doing? No, I was doing DC. To <laughs> was like, are you stealing my fucking thunder? Yeah, that was my guy. You son of a that's bitch. That's a good poll right there. Um, Elizabeth Olsen as Wonder Woman. I buy it. Um, Scarlett Johansson. She seems more like a Captain Marvel. Think so? I think so. But you know what? It's your list. I and also, I'm going, going the other way. way. You are. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I forgot the rules of the game. All right, who else? Uh, Scarlett Johansson as Selena Kyle. Ooh, that's good. Um, fucking what's his face? Why can't I? I'm I'm bad with names tonight. Drax, who played that dude? Um, um uh, what is his? What is Drax's former name? Former wrestler. Come on, internet. Oh my God, I'm, I'm sure you're shouting too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave Bautista. Dave, Dave Bautista. Bautista. That's it. As uh, as Bruce Wayne. Dave Batista plays fucking Batman? Yeah. That is, wait. Yes, you were allowed to do that. <laughs> that is, that's fucking interesting. Because he would be like this yeah. Batman, the one that jumps out of the fucking Batmobile yeah. to fight the fucking mutant leader and shit. You'd be the one who looks the most out of place in a suit. Yeah. Mm, that's an interesting take. Um, I like Dave Batista too. Um, See, I would have been like, Killer Croc. But you're right, <laughs> fucking... Um, what's his face? Um, Chris Pratt. Yeah. As Arthur Curry. The Aquaman. The Aquaman. Um, trying to think, who else do I have to play with? Um, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle is uh, is Rachel Ghoul. Holy shit. That yeah. is, I want to see that fucking movie. He's, I mean, look, uh, he's wonderful in these Marvel movies, but like, you want to see fucking Don Cheadle like destroy it. Watch this. We were talking about Denzel, mm. Devil in a Blue Dress. Remember that? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, he would be a great because fucking he's, he's that on is a great player. call, Ra Raz Al Ghul. Ooh. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who uh, else? Paul Rudd. Paul. So much easier doing Marvel to. <laughs> I mean, the Marvel cast, because right. we know them all. Right, and it's, and it's a big cast. Yeah. Um, Paul Rudd, Booster Gold. I, I was literally about to drop the mic, but I'm afraid to hurt the ears <laughs> of JC and Andrew. Such a good call. That'd be fun. That is an excellent fucking call. 
Oh, I want to see your movie much more than mine. Um, <laughs> Who you got? Uh, Mark Ruffalo. Um, oh, he would have been a he's good He's your Batman. He could have been a good Batman. I don't want to take shit away from Dave Bautista, but I think he's your Batman. Um, <laughs> uh, Deathstroke. Who is? Uh, Ruffalo. You got him as Deathstroke? Yeah. Although Jim Gordon is not a bad pull. I heard Andrew in the corner. Jim Gordon is a pull. That's yeah, a good pull, yeah. That's a good pull. Yeah, Ruffalo is Jim Gordon. I could totally fucking see that. Ooh, I, most of your answers were fucking genius. Give it up for Mark, everybody. Nobody's Wee! here. Fuck. Answers. Uh, great question. Thank you. Great question. Now let's go to another. JC? All right. We've got... Uh, I'm sorry. Are we at 21.99.20? We are. <laughs> Did somebody donate 20 cents? <laughs> I like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are your guys' favorite movie quotes? What are my favorite movie quotes? Um, uh, and I am Iron Man. <laughs> um, what else do I love? Uh, from A Man for All Seasons, Paul Schofield as Thomas Moore says, uh, when a man takes an oath, he holds his, 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 self, his soul in his hands like water. And if you open your fingers, he cannot help, he cannot hope to find himself again. Uh, that always stuck with me. Not like fucking, not like, you know, uh, go ahead, make my day. Obviously, it's a <laughs> much longer quote. Um, uh, what other, I mean, almost every Cohen, Cohen Brothers fucking quote, my name is H.I. McDonough. Like, I could do all of Raising Arizona. Um, how about you? The Riddle of Steel. You know what it is, don't you, boy? Mm. The Riddle of Steel. I'll give you the secret. Flesh is stronger. What is steel compared to the hand that wields it? Look at that woman there. Look at her. Do it. Come to me, my child. <laughs> that is strength, boy. That is power. He was so emphatic. That, that <laughs> is strength, boy. That is power. His whole wig moves. Such a pity. Crucify um, him on the tree, tree of, of woe. woe. Oh, that's fucking excellent. Yes. Excellent. Um, what is best in life? Crush your enemies. Crush your enemies. Get them before, before you. And he'll lamentation of the women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Conan is Crom, I do not pray to you. I have no tongue for it. And if what? you do not help us, then to hell with you. <laughs> yes. I always thought when I was a kid, I was like, because I was a Catholic kid, I was like, you fucked yourself at the end. <laughs> yeah. You don't fucking go like, help me if not to hell with you, because that's how fucking Sandal Bergman died. That's the loophole. Conan, he wasn't thinking, but he was a barbarian, yeah. so, to be fair. It's a transmitter. It's a, radio, it's a radio for talking to God. Do you want to see God? Let's go see him together. I got nothing, I got nothing better, better to do. do. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh, that's great. I hadn't thought about that in a while. Um, Some things in here, Ryan, do not react well to bullets. Great line. Um... When I left you, I was but a learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil. <laughs> I love you. I know. Um, Not we're gonna years. need. We're gonna need a bigger boat. Not the years. It's the mileage. Mm. Who's that? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. I don't remember that one you're that not, much. You're not the man you used to be. <laughs> Remember your Charlemagne. <laughs> My army is the birds in the I sky. I think a, uh, probably a lot of Jaws if I thought about it, right? Aside from we're going to need a bigger boat. Jaws 2 springs to mind. I know what that is. That's a shark. I know what one looks like because I've seen it up close. You better do something about this one because I'm not going through that hell again. And they fucking fired him. Mm. Do you think that's air you're breathing? Do you think that your strength in your body has anything to do at a place like this? What was that? Morpheus. Oh. Hmm. I know Kung Take Fu. Take blue hole. <laughs> I know Kung Fu. Um, let me see if I can still do it. Um, uh, tw uh, in invasion of the Mutants for, of 2050 A.D. Take off. They saw it already. No, they got to see it. Take off. I was the only one left on the planet after the Holocaust day. Eh? Russia blew up the U.S. and the U.S. blew up Russia. That was strange for <laughs> I'm going, not a lot of people know that one. Um, great. That made me happy. Yes. And rest well and dream of large women. That's awesome. <laughs> um, 
Hair of the dog that bit me, Lloyd. <laughs> Hair of the dog that bit me. Yeah. We See, do. honey, it's okay. He saw it on television. I am the monarch of the sea. I am the ruler of the coop. <laughs> um, Bad dates. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. I was a child. You knew enough. What was that? That's Marion. <laughs> Basically. You still fucking running uh, Raiders I quotes? Run, I can run Raiders like all fucking day. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Indy. Blow it all to hell. What is it? Uh, Keep your eyes shut, Marion. It's beautiful. <laughs> Good evening, Fraulein. Yes, uh, we are thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frau Brucher. <laughs> um, no time for love, Dr. Jones. That's the other one. <laughs> That's another one. We are going to die. That's him in that fucking putting his mouth through the fucking hole. Two days ago, I saw a tanker that hole your. No, two days ago, I saw a rig that hole your tanker. You want to get out of here? You talk to me. Um, uh, we named the dog Indiana. I should have. No one a town. My favorite line in that whole movie is, we sh I should have mailed it to the Marx Brothers. <laughs> 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 Such disappointment. It was actually like, you know, I remember when I first saw that movie, I was like, oh man, like it, it wasn't like Temple of Doom was like, holy shit, Satanism and shit like that, mm -hmm. kind of. Not Satanism, but Kali. And then when they got to this one, it was like, oh, like that, you know. And I, 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 we're, what happened to fucking pulling hearts out of chests and shit like that? But I learned to appreciate that movie as time went on. My old man loved it because he loved Sean Connery. He was like, oh my God. Um, but it was like, I don't want to see Indiana Jones getting dressed down by his dad. <laughs> and then the older I got, I was like, I do kind of want to see that. Yeah. I'm going to leave you as you left her, stranded on a dead rock, buried alive, alive. Con! Ooh. Con! It's coming through now, Con. <laughs> you have to learn why things work on a starship. Revenge is a dish best served cold. It's, and what is it? It's even colder in space. In space. <laughs> Kirk. You keep missing the target. God, we could do it all night, and we haven't made a penny doing it. <laughs> Twenty-one ninety-nine twenty. Nobody's given us a buck no. or, uh, or eighty cents for any of that. So, for JC, like bullshit nerd. A, a, a next question, please. Uh, Casey wants to know uh, what color lightsabers you guys would have. Ooh, give me the dark saber, man. That shit looks metal. Man, in a minute, minute, man, in a minute, 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 absence of light. Man, in a minute, minute, minute. You flesh. <laughs> Flesh lightsaber. <laughs> Could you imagine? You would really throw off your opponents. Be like, schwang, schwang. Like, that looks like a dick. <laughs> and then you've got him. <laughs> it's like I've been run through by a giant phallus. The phallus saber. I liked his better. Uh, what else we got? Hey, we finally got a few bucks. Now we're yeah. at 2204. We talked about dicks. Yes, that's right. Keep them going. More dick questions. Yeah. Uh, if you could put Jane, Sal, and Bob in any Marvel movie, which one do you think they would fit in the most? Ooh. I mean, honestly, they'd be probably most at home in a... Uh, the Spider-Man movies seem light enough. I want to say Guardians, but them in space makes no fucking sense. But those two dudes hanging outside of a convenience store in Queens, I could see it. You know, not for the whole plot. They're not like, you know, it's just... Hey, fucking... Hey, there goes... Hey, it's Maury Povich or whatever the fuck. Like, just, <laughs> I'll let them come up with the writing. Um, you know, a little cameo and shit. That's what I want more than anything in this life, man. Fucking, people are always like, you want to make a Marvel movie, don't you? And I'm like, fuck no. That's a lot of responsibility. But I would love to be in a Marvel movie. Because number one, everyone sees those Marvel movies. Number two, I love those Marvel movies. Number three, they put you in shape. You saw fucking what they did to... Kumail? Holy shit. <laughs> My man's got like shelves going down to his dick. Yeah, like got, muscle shelves that you see on fucking like... He's got like a seven pack. 
<laughs> I'm like, here's my six and like one bonus one. And it's part of the job. They're like, yeah. by the way, this sucks, but you're getting paid to get in shape. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I started listening to, to his podcast. Um, About staying the in. No, it's staying in with Kumail and Emily. He oh. and his wife are now doing sort of a, listen, guys, we've been working from home for the last six years. Like we are homebodies and now we're in this sort of scenario where we're all doing it. Let us give you some advice that, you know, people who've worked from home and who are married and have to now be confined with each other. Right. And it's also because it's the two of them, they're fucking hilarious. But he talks about the fact that like a week after they were quarantined, because Emily, his wife, has, a, has an autoimmune disorder. And so for her, something like this it, is Like an infection is, yeah, yeah. Coronavirus you know? would be like the worst. Yeah. And so like they were like ahead of their, they did all their fucking shopping. They knew very early on that like we are going to have to, they went to stay at home before anybody was told to stay at home. Right. But it was like, yeah, we were in the house for like a week and my men's health cover drops, which is like the fucking like look at me world and my crazy fucking body. And, uh, and he was like, I, I was looking so much forward to it two weeks ago and now I could give a fuck. He's like, you know, the, the, the realignment of my priorities is such that now I'm just overly concerned about my wife but I gotta like go on the Twitter and I gotta do the contractually obligated social media and I gotta say, hey guys, you should read this when my mind is absolutely not on you know, how right. much fucking work that I did. But he did a shit ton of work because they sent over the Chris Pratt guy, they sent over the Paul Rudd guy. It's like our, our, our specialty is turning like somewhat doughy comedians into Adonises. We'll give you the V. Yeah. The V down to your dick. So like, <laughs> that's what I want. I want to get that Marvel V down to my dick, man. Yeah. So way more than making one of them, being in one of them would be awesome. Yeah, just send that dude over to my house and that, have that be my job for six months is to just work out twice a week and eat the shitty food you got to eat. And, and then sooner or later you come up for air and people are like, what the fuck happened to you? It's like, holy shit. I got marvelized. I got a marvelous body. Yeah. Um, all right, what else we got? A lot of people want to see Jay and Silent Bob in a movie called The Infinity Stoners ah! with uh, Lewis from Ant-Man, Michael yes. Pena's character. Michael Pena's That's character. That's where the chat was uh, shouting. Uh, I w speaking of Michael Pena, I watched Fantasy Island. Did you? How was Blumhouse it? Blumhouse did a Fantasy Island. Um, it was like, you know, it totally watchable, mm. particularly for a home watch and shit. But he's wonderful in it. <laughs> you know, he's just, I'll watch him do anything. But it was, you know, I don't think I would have made a better Fantasy Island movie. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was. I, I thought it was like cool. They took it darker. I mean, the show, even like, as I remember very loosely, it got to a place. That's so like in the third season where I think season one is just a fucking vacation show. It's Love Boat, but there's an island. Love and, Boat with an island. And but then they up. did start getting darker. <clears throat> they started going darker. It was like, is Mr. Rourke actually like an angel, like a fallen angel? And is this some level of purgatory? And these are people who need to like earn their way back or sink deeper into the, into the pit? I'm like, that's fucking fascinating. That is kind of a cool take. Where was that show when I was nine? This was, I wouldn't say quite that, but more along the lines of like, you know, fucking... He's not the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, and, and there, he's, he, there's a reason, but yeah, mm. he's perhaps... Yeah. The island is a shady place. I kind of like, you know, this segment of the Blumhouse business, which is let, let us take a piece of IP that you have some familiarity with and tweak the fuck out of it. Mark just saw Invisible Man. I just saw Invisible Man, and you talked about it like three weeks ago, and I finally was like... I will spend twenty dollars to rent this for a day. It's fucking good, isn't it? It's really good. It's really like as a writer and as a filmmaker, I was like, this is some good yeah. shit. Like, like it's it, clever. Because it, there, there's the version of this story that is like large and wild and big sci-fi, and you know, invisible shit happening. And what can we drape on them now? And and they were really smart. And like, we don't need a lot of money to tell the story. And the story that we want to tell is a character piece about a woman who is trying to convince herself she's not going mad. <clears throat> you know, and the source of that so madness, good. of that insanity, is an abusive husband. And it becomes personal. And, and it becomes a story about surveillance and about stalking and about abuse and about like standing up for yourself and choosing to leave and fighting for what you believe in to the point where that thing has to even be yourself. Mm. And it twists exactly when it needs to twist. And the people, it, it reminded me a bit of Get Out, um, and not, no surprise coming from Blumhouse, is that the, one of the genius things about Get Out is that you're with that character, Michael. And every time the audience wants him to leave, he wants to leave. 
because it starts to feel weird. And then right. the movie gives him reasons to stay. It's like, dude, just, okay, listen, I'm going to stay for you. You're my girl, and I get you. These are your parents, and you love them, and I love you, so this is all fucking weird, and I get it, but I'm going to stay for you. And right. then when he's like, we need to leave, his girlfriend says, you know what? Let's leave. You don't feel comfortable? Let's go. Like, it, it, it anticipates where the audience is, and it leans into it. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're never, you're never shouting at the screen for that character to do something that she should do and doesn't do. Right. Um, don't go in there! Yep. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. I fucking love the suit. Yeah, suit's I mean, really spoilers. Smart. If you haven't seen it, one, two, three. He don't take a potion. Mm -mm. It's technology, and yeah. it's you know bullshit movie technology. Mm -hmm. But it was just enough sci-fi gobbledygook where like, he's an optics, and then later on <laughs> it's like he's wearing a fucking suit with little tiny cameras that pop in and out. I was mm -hmm. like, this is dope. It had a comic book feel to it. Yeah, I mean they, that is the suit. There's been. There's been experiments into, because of course nerds are also scientists, and they want to make cloaking devices. Because like I saw it on fucking Star Trek. How could we make a legit cloaking device? Right. And, you know, they're a little bit of the way there, where there was some dude who like built some kind of blanket, and the blanket has a camera behind him, and in the front of the camera is a bunch of tiny LED cameras. And so it looks as if he's not there. And so when he moves, it is just showing you what's behind him, projecting it in front, so it looks like he's not there. They did that in a movie, I remember. Ooh, they're going down the hallway with a projection. It's um, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Impossible 4, Ghost Protocol, I think. And it's the, like, if you can get in the right perspective, you can trick the eye into seeing kind of whatever you want to do. And that, the as real close as we get to invisibility. Yeah. But, like, it's one of those, here's a bit of science that we're just going to push a little bit. And it's less fantasy and it's just science fiction. And was that this year, Invisible Man? Yeah. Because that could totally fucking win awards. Like, I thought it was incredibly well done. Yeah. I mean, it's in, in, in the same world that Get Out wins the best original screenplay Oscar, not just nomination, but Oscar. Yeah, yeah. You know, this, this has the capacity. Like, it's, it is social science fiction and social horror the same way that Get Out was. I like that social science fiction. Um, so yeah, I really, really dug it. Uh, it's super fucking smart. 22.54.19. Oh, fuck with the 19 cents. <laughs> like, what's going on, kids? Well, motherfucker's like, it's a tip jar. Here's a nickel. I know, Here's really. Like, I gave he, you five people cents. People were, somebody donated 4.20, and then uh, people were donating different amounts to try to even it out. <laughs> But they were doing it at the same time. That's hysterical. Um, we're glad that they give it all. It's really fucking kind. Yeah. We are up to uh, 22... 64. 64, 19 within like fucking 200 and change of the goal we set out for yeah. ourselves. That's great. It's so lovely. We'll take... Uh, let's do two more questions and then <laughs> get the fuck out of Dodge. All right. Let's see. Uh, if... Uh, here we go. Super here. Here's... You know what? Here you go. Let's get this to 2,500. If you uh, get us there, it's two, what is that? 2,264. So about 22, so 230 bucks, 236. Mm -hmm. You get us there, me and Mark will throw in some money for Bink. Yeah, I'll throw in a grand. Fucking grand? Yeah. We should have talked about this. <laughs> I fucking said some money, Mark. Jesus. All right, a grand it is, man. A uh, thousand bucks there. A thousand bucks here, man. So you get us to twenty five hundred uh, before the end of the show. Yeah. You, you, now you got to beat a clock. It's a game and shit. You get us twenty five hundred. We will each donate a thousand of our Hollywood writer dollars, <laughs> and they're huge, ladies and gentlemen. Writers are overpaid in this business. <laughs> <laughs> so you get us there, kids. In the next, uh, give us a countdown, JC. In the clock next it two up. questions. What do we got? It's nine thirty-seven. So by nine forty-five. Thirty-seven. What? Well, fuck forty-five. They got three minutes. Yes, okay. nine forty. If in the next three minutes we hit twenty-five hundred, we throw in each throw in a thousand bucks for Bink. But if we don't, we will never mention Bink again. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are stakes, motherfuckers. Y'all love comic book stories. We're bad guys now, man. This is a super villain move. You have a chance to save it. Uh, we're, we're ransoming the future. Yes, that's right. Uh, our money is ready to go into the pot, but it's up to you uh, yeah. to get us there. You guys are the Joker standing over the pile of money with a giant fucking gasoline can. For 220 bucks, don't have to be one person, can be like 100 people at two bucks a piece. Uh, we'll hit that goal, and then we'll jump in. We've so, got 19, almost 2,000 people watching now in chat. Oh, so that's, well, that's, that's like awesome. a penny each. Thank yeah. you oh, for 23 all. 23.94, somebody just tossed in 100 bucks. 
We're almost there. Look at that shit. Look well that done, shit. kids. Probably Donnie Cates again. <laughs> Oh, Donnie Cates isn't going to have any money from writing if he keeps <laughs> fucking buying things for people. Very sweet. Um, all right. Last question of the night. I thought we were doing two questions. No, we're doing... Now we remember when we changed it. We're like, oh, fucking... All right. Uh, I'm so making this up as I go along. I'm like, 20, don't you know what's in my 24, head? 2494. 2519.19. It looks like you and me are fucking... We were going to high five, but we can't do Keep. that shit anymore. Uh, we will be throwing in, because uh, uh, I would imagine you got to connect it to something, right? How do we do this? Well, we'll... You guys can probably go direct to Bing. Yeah, And then we'll do our that. tip jar will go there. Beautiful. So yes. we're good for a thousand bucks a piece. How sweet. We hit the fucking uh, figure That's that we amazing, put up there. That's amazing, you guys. Well done, everybody. It takes a village. A global village. Indeed. And all that money, every penny of it's going to Bing. Me and Mark throwing in another grand a piece. So with 2,500 bucks... And another 4500 bucks. 4500 bucks for Bank and our, our, our friends at the local comic book store. For a night's work. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. And, and it wasn't even hard work. We were having fun. We fucking talked to Jim Lee, for Christ's sake. Hell yeah. Um, all right. Here's with the last question. Take us home, Papa. All right. Uh, Nadim wants to know who should play Stan Lee in a biopic? Great question. Mm. Great question to go out on. Yes. Who plays Stan Lee in a biopic? Well, not Tom Hanks. He just did Mr. Rogers. Mm. And he also doesn't have a... I mean, he's got a Stan disposition, that's for sure. He's sweeter than fuck. But he doesn't, he doesn't seem like Stan to me. A lot of people always said Breaking Bad. What's his name? Um, Brian, Brian Cranston, Cranston, who I played poker with online during mm. Ben's tournament over the weekend. Um, yes, Brian Cranston... Like, totally be Stan, like, circa 70s and shit mm -hmm. like that. 70s and 80s and stuff. Uh, age him up later on for the Stan the later years. Uh, he did a great job as Trumbo. So he's, he's a really nice choice. But uh, let me think outside the box. Like Don Cheadle. Like, like <laughs> Mark's Don Cheadle for Raz al Ghul. That was such a good pull. I would like to see Don Cheadle as Stan Lee. Don Cheadle could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> He's that good an actor. If you've not seen Devil in a Blue Dress, you'll watch it and you'll be like, Don Cheadle could totally play Stan Lee. <laughs> um, hmm. Those were mine. Who do you got? Um, I have two. Okay. And it's weird because I don't know how much of that life you want to tell. Yeah. Um, whether or not you're going to focus on the early years, whether it's the entire sweep of... You know, Stanley Lieber starting at Timely Comics all the way up to, you know, ed Editor-in-Chief Emeritus. Um, I feel like Mark Maron could be pretty good. Hmm. Um, I think there's a, there's a sort of hangdog energy to him that's kind of interesting. It's funny, though. I, I don't think, and I ain't trying to take anything away from Mark, but I don't think of fucking Stan as hangdog. Stan was like, hey, you no, get no. the crazy Eddie guy to play Stan. <laughs> <laughs> he had Stan's energy. Yeah. I mean, but I think... Like I think the 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 workaholic version of Stan, which he was, as well as the public persona of which he was, I think you can get that duality with somebody like that. Which is kind of like fun because he his guy wrote superheroes, and so you'd be writing a dual version of Stan, yeah. the guy in the bullpen who was more of the mm -hmm. administrator, and the guy who was tub thumping for comics yeah. out in the world. Um, and then I thought about like Zach Braff, a if, young Stan. Yeah, like the sort of the young, we're getting it started, like I'm, I'm betting on myself, I'm trying my dream, I'm going to write this fucking book, and, you know, Joni by his side saying, you should absolutely do this, buddy, and like, you do the early years of Marvel, the sort of halcyon, the, the, you know, between 64 and 78, mm -hmm. Stan Lee. Like a Mad Men version of yeah, Stan Yeah, you do like the, the young fucking upstart version of that. Well, let's think about Avengers. Is there anybody in the Avengers cast that you would cast that could be Stan Lee? What about RDJ? It depends. I mean, yeah, yes. The energy like, is absolutely Particularly there. like circa 70s, 80s Stan, when Stan comes out to Los Stan Angeles to, to try to say, yeah, like from that era on up into the... I could see him pulling it off, too. Is there a version of this bio? It would be interesting. But you remember that Bob Dylan biopic? I'm not... Where a bunch of different people played him? I'm not here, I think I'm it was called. I'm not here, and, like, you know, like, Heath Ledger was him for once, and I think 
Gwyneth Paltrow. Kate Blanchett. Kate, Kate Blanchett. That was the that was the the, the blonde actress I was thinking. So about. you could do that. Have a bunch of people play. That's smart. Yeah. Have a bunch of different cool people play Stan, including some woman. The way they had Kate Blanchett play totally. one chapter and shit. You know, and I think that 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 lets you. It gets to be an homage to that guy by all the people who you know loved him, and whether it's everybody who's in the MCU, whether it's just actors in general, storytellers in general, but I think that it could be really interesting. Um, version of that story, and you get to tell the not to say cradle to grave, but the the arc of his life in ways you don't have to de-age RDJ to play young Stan. You don't have to age up someone like Jack Zach Braff to play old Stan. You can just do all of it. I'll tell you right now, whoever it is, as a tough fucking mountain to climb, because you want to talk about one of a kind. You want to talk about like there's as we sit here going, oh, who could do it? Nobody could pull that guy's energy off. Nobody could fucking capture the magic. It was like watching Gandalf speak whenever he spoke, whenever he talked. Like, yeah, and I'm sure somebody could do a pretty decent impression, but he, I, think, I think it'd be virtually impossible to do a stand that even approximates the stand that Stan built. You gotta remember, he built that character over a course of decades. And what went out of this world, the stand we all knew, was him worn to perfection in the character of Stan Lee. Tough to ask any actor in the world to be like, can you pull off in six months what this man took 50 years to fucking perfect? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough bill to, to, to whatever the appropriate phrase is. Hard act to follow, tough yeah. shoes to fill. But then you look at something like Taron Egerton as, as Elton John, who similarly was like, here's the me that I was, and here's the me that I built for the public. And you get to watch that guy switch between the two within a scene. Can I make a casting suggestion? Yes. It is very off the beaten path. Okay. But I'm just trying to think of energy that you're mm -hmm. matching. Because Stan had this very specific energy. Mm -hmm. This is, this is going to be controversial. Mm -hmm. This is going to you know, get a lot of people angry. But if you think about it, and you think about the energy of the person I'm going to present, you might be like, oh, I can kind of see it. They're mm. completely different in size. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino has as much energy when you talk to him as Stan always had. Mm. Um, and as Stan was like single-mindedly passionate about his field, so was Quentin. I could see Quentin pulling off fucking Stan Lee. I'm glad one of us does. I, I don't know. I, I, the energy I like. Is there anybody a... agreeing with me, JC? Uh, they're a minute behind us. <laughs> Andrew's in the booth going, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> not couple happening. A guys, couple guys say they can see it. Right, right. The yeah. energy is what I'm talking about. Does that count for anything in this Somebody life? says QT is too much energy. He would have to dial it back, but that's the point of a performance. <laughs> <laughs> you dial it back a little bit. Um, I think yeah, you can pull it up. I, I like Quentin as an actor, man. I think he's got like something special. Like the way that like, I'm not saying he's good as Brad Dorf, but the way that Brad Dorf does something very like specific, where you're like I like him in everything. I, I like Quentin. I think he's a good actor. Um, oh, you know who'd be really good? Go. What the fuck? Why did I just Denzel. forget his name? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. And in a world where we do the Stan movie with a bunch of different people playing Stan, oh, yeah. Denzel definitely plays one of them. He plays like the older Stan, and you get fucking Childish Gambino <laughs> play like young Stan. Um, Donald Glover, get in there. Um, Walton Goggins. Oh, good, good. You know, cool. like that, that's a dude who, I mean, I've, I've seen crazy energy version of Walton. Right. But also like kind of cerebral and, and sort of inward focusing. And, the, the duality of that character, of that person, is... I mean, you need a, a Titanic actor to pull it off. And I think that he's, he's the kind of person who could do that. Um, George Carlin would have been great. Mm. He had a, a Stan energy, and also he had the age, too, so that would help. Again, you're, depending on which Stan you're doing, like, Stan uh, left us, sadly, left this world, but he left this world after 90, almost six years, mm. 95 verging on 96 so he's also one of the most sprightly and fucking in shape you know, what are they called nonagenarians mm -hmm. that I've ever seen in my life like <laughs> good luck finding an actor to play that guy like oh 
Uh, but what a great question. Absolutely. And it resulted in a lot of chit-chat and stuff and fond memories of a good friend. Not just a good friend, but a guy who made all this shit possible. We don't get to sit around and be fans of things were it not for the great Stan Lee going like, hey, this shit's legitimate and whatnot. He was the first fan. Um, there it is. We gave you a lot of information. We showed you people talking about uh, their business, their comic book business, or their comic book store business. We covered the fucking news. Um, we, for 20 minutes, we just tried to think of our favorite movie lines. <laughs> you know, and, and bad and impressions of I actors. started feeling like Michael Scott, where he's always like, trying to think of like, I'm thinking of one right now. Like, oh, it's so fucking slow. I realized I was such a stoner. But that is a Friday night, man. Hell yeah. On Fat Man uh, Beyond. Uh, do you have a good time, ladies and gentlemen? <sighs> oh, I can hear them. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being here, man. Thank uh, JC and Andrew, who uh, let us come into the Scum and Villainy uh, Cantina uh, and do this show for you all and whatnot. Yeah. Don't forget the uh, Bink, uh, what is it, Bink? Binkfoundation.org. Um, and thank you again to Jim Lee and Car D'Angelo for taking time out of their Friday nights, in some cases retreating from their mountain hideaways and returning to LA to, uh, for good Wi-Fi signal to be able to talk to us. So and thank the Lord, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, uh, thank all of you who gave money for tonight's cause, uh, yes. which is bank and whatnot. Really fucking cool of you guys to do that and whatnot. And we'll be right there with you throwing in. Uh, a grand a piece afterwards, man, because we love comic book stores too. We don't get to be who we are in life without the local comic book store. So, comic books rule. There you go. And look, we make like we made a fucking good living off of liking comic books. <laughs> you know, what I'm we saying? did all right. Totally, we did all right. Not not as good as like you know fucking the Russo brothers. The, yes. They got all, but, but worth it worth it, worth it, because they're fucking talented and shit. But yes, comics gave us a lot, so it's the least we could do is give some back. Is what I was trying to say. Thank you. <laughs> Better writer than I. Um, uh, there, uh, thanks for hanging out with us, ladies and gentlemen, but there is no show without the man to my left. Give it up for Mr. Mark Bernardin. Thank you! And that is Fat Man on Batman for this week, man. It's, it's a throwback. It is. Fat Man, sorry, that, <laughs> that is the, Fat Man and Batman Beyond. I was, was doing the, too many things at once. That I was did. the old school Lucasfilm logo. It was. In, in honor of JC, there's a little neon Lucasfilm logo. That is Fat Man Beyond for this week, man. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Uh, tune in next week. Same fat time. Same fat channels. Modcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. For the good of all Cree. I don't know why I did the Star Trek thing. <laughs>